Oh yeah, I have a four comeliness and a five charisma. Hello and welcome to RPG Research. I'm your host and game master, Hawk Robinson, and we are continuing our introductory playthrough of Beck Me D and D. That's Basic Expert Companion, Masters, Immortals, Dungeons and Dragons. It goes back to the late 1970s. So after a, a original Dungeons and Dragons, OD and D was created in 1974. They kept adding little booklets and it started to get to be a bit of a mess as they started changing the rules. So they decided they were going to refine and clean it up and not unify all those rules together, and that would become Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition. But there were some people who didn't want all of the added features that were being added to AD&D 1st Edition, so they, at around the same time, also created Basic D&D. And that went through about four or five different versions of Basic mm -hmm. D&D before it kind of stabilized. And my favorite version for introducing people to new role-playing gaming is the 1984 Frank Metzer... Red Box Sorry, 1982 Frank Metzer Red Box Edition. Um, there we go. Uh, because it has step by step how to play, kind of choose your own adventure type, solo adventures in the player's handbook. The and then the first time GM, how to GM for your very first time. It re You read through the blocks, it's all there. You don't really have to prepare much at all. You can just jump in and start playing. Uh, immediately. And other than Call of Cthulhu on the solo side, which they did not do it with the DM side, in 30 plus years, I have not found a role playing game system that does that as effectively as this version of Basic DD. Later versions of DD doesn't do it effectively either. So I keep begging game developers to emulate this particular approach if you want to bring in new players rather than just keep you know, it in, in a closer, a closer well, circle. Today. Uh, so, but a lot of folks here have not had experience before with basic D and D from from this era. And by the way, you can get these in PDF. Uh, purchase them for about five dollars a book on uh, Drive Through RPG, RPG Now, etc. Unfortunately, they don't offer print on demand. They do for some of the modules, but they don't offer print on demand for the rule book. But you could print yourself, I guess, if you had to. They're not very large. The player's manual is only, and this includes three solo adventures in it. It's only 48 pages and includes three solo adventures in the player's manual. And then the DM... Oh, wait. Did I get that backwards? Sorry. That was the Dungeon Masters, guys. That's only 48 pages. Sorry. The player's manual is 64 pages and includes three adventures. And then the DM's uh, manual includes uh, a full adventure, you know, to take your, your players through their first full adventure. And it's complete, and it walks you through step by step with all the captions of what to read, etc. Um, from accessibility perspective, the only problem is it uses gray boxes to show you what to read, which black text on a dark gray box is harder to read. Um, they should have gone with a lighter gray, or better yet, just a line around each one. That's much more readable, which they did do in, in the modules and such in later editions. But by far the best introduction to a role-playing game to start out. So we started this uh, about two weeks ago. Um, different players, volunteers are here at different times, but we're going to continue the adventure from where we left off. And you can see in the overhead map uh, where they were kind of progressing. Now, a couple little things that you guys may not be aware of in later editions, but in here they point out, as you're preparing for this adventure, to make sure that each group declares... And you, you hear this in newer editions, like the One Ring and Aim, it kind of came back. But they talk like it's a new thing, and no, what once was old is new again. They said, uh, as you're preparing for this adventure, go through this checklist. Do all the players know how to play? Have they played the solo adventure in the player's manual? Self-taught, right? You don't have, they, they can just learn. Nobody there has to have any prior experience. Have you read this book up to this point? Have you looked through the rest of this book? You don't have to read through it in depth, just kind of got a feel for where things are. It takes like five minutes. Do you and the players know the who, why, what, where, when of the adventure? Well, we've learned that as we start reading through it. Uh, are all the characters ready to go, including equipment? So what, what are you doing with Dan? Does he need a new character? Yeah. Okay, so hurry and roll 3d6 uh, in oh. a row. Write them down as you go. Oh, okay. Look at the um, rules and sexual people. Are you going to another d6? Yes. Can you? What? Can I borrow a d6? Yeah. Okay, so you guys will get another quick intro on how quickly we can make a character. It's 7.20 p.m. right now. So he's now starting making a character. The only really long part is the equipment making. It doesn't take very long until you get to the equipment and you kind of bog down a little bit. 
or uh, picnic equipment selecting, you know, spending money and all that. You just don't give them any money, it'd be fine. So, now did I do the extra stat with you guys for comeliness? I did. So, yes. make sure you had a seventh one underneath charisma, which will be your comeliness, which is represented CMS. Danielle, you can show him on your sheet what that looks like. And then also show you can also look on Riley. Camera. Yeah, that's kind of hard at my level. Well, the thing is, uh, it's so quick and dirty to make characters that it's It's comely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what? Yeah, my scores range between four and fourteen. Yeah. These are not like epic fifth edition. And I do them edition. in order? Yep, I have to just put them in order. Mm -hmm. Which makes for a lot faster game, but you know, limits your choices. Okay. Done. All right, what are your stats? Uh, strength of 11, uh, Intelligence of 10, Wisdom of 10, Dexterity of 9, Constitution of 12, Charisma of 7, Comeliness of 9. That's pretty good, actually. That's, like, way better than all That's of our characters. That's a decent character. Okay. Um, it's not a super epic character. I mean, you're kind of barely above average there. But, no, that's, I mean, that's about average, but that's okay. Okay. All right. Um, Just with the all right, so you wrote all the stats down. So yep. then you got your few choices. So let, let's let's go with, with in his case. Let's go. We're gonna write. Uh, we're gonna do the red book. That, that's too many choices in there. Let's just go with the red book. Or I'm just gonna oh. do the penalties and bonuses. Yeah, let's just do the red book choices here, because there's a lot of other classes in there. That so you've got cleric, fighter, thief, elf, magic user, halfling, or dwarf. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Uh, the elf and halfling and dwarf are classes. Yeah. Yeah. So an elf is basically a fighter magic user. A dwarf is basically kind of a fighter. Do they get a little bit of cleric spells, I think? I'm not sure. Elf? And then a halfling is basically a type of rogue. Elf is magic user fighter. Is yeah. anyone, over, is anyone no, else so playing an elf? Yeah. What's Shane playing? Oh, you remember. Shane is playing a, a cleric. cleric. Okay. Yeah, a cleric. Here's your character sheet. Memorize yeah, it. Yeah, I announced it on Twitter, Shane. Um, John, do you want to... You need a USB drive to do that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Just scan it and send it to him. It, it, see, I might have it in my pocket. You know, scan it to the thumb drive, then stick it in the laptop and email it to him. Okay. Then we still have a copy. Oh, well, I have a negative, uh, I have negative uh, score of Prisma, and everything else is zero. So you're okay. okay. <laughs> just average. All right. I don't have a thumb drive. Sorry. All right. I have a new You'll just have to read. I will so read Shane, if you want to do something, just let us know and we'll look it up for you. Okay. Well, you want to go ahead and tell him his stats and then what sure. his weapons are. Your first level cleric with eight armor class, six hit points. You have a 12 Strength, 8 Intelligence, 15 Wisdom, 7 Dexterity, 10 Constitution, 12 Charisma. Oh, 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 oh. Slow down, man. <laughs> He's trying to write down each one. Okay, so it's Cleric, first level. Armor class, 8. So, Dan, the way the armor class works here is 9 is clothing. Eight is one better than that. Hit points, six. You want a lower armor class, and it can go negative, like negative two and stuff. That's what I'm familiar with. Plate armor is like one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it related to Thacko. Yeah. Slightly, slight variation, but yes. Are you ready for strength, intelligence, etc.? Go for it. Strength, 12. Intelligence, eight. Wisdom, 15. Dexterity, seven. 
Constitution, 10. Charisma, 12. Comeliness, 12. Let me know when you're ready for saving throws. Poison or death ray, 11. <clears throat> Magic wand, 12. Dan, ignore anything about skills or specialization. Turn to stone or paralysis. Oh, okay. 14. That's, That's why I wanted you to kind of use this. This is much okay. faster and simpler. Hand that down to him, please. It, but, but less well organized. Dragon breath. 16. Mm -hmm. Spells or magic staff. 14. Uh, turn. 2 die 6. Skeleton, seven. Zombie, nine. Ghoul, eleven. You need a twenty to hit armor class zero. Enough. Uh, you have a plus 5% experience points. We don't have an experience point, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, because we're going to be jumping through different editions. So after after this, we're going to jump to another basic adventure. And then we're going to jump straight to an expert adventure. And each time we'll just level you guys up very quickly, so don't worry about XP. We'll just jump you to the... To, so you're going to go from first to third to get to different versions of basic. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to jump up to, um, what was it, so 4th to 14th, so it was, uh, I think ninth. we're going to jump to ninth, so that gets you in the middle of expert range. Then we're going to jump up to, I think, around 19th, which puts you in the middle of companion range. Then about 29th for master range, and then 36 or 37 for immortal range. And that's where you have to petition deity, and then you have to go on a quest for them to try to become an immortal yourself. So we're going to kind of jump through those just so you get some basic exposure to each of them. Um, you know, it's it'd be a lot more fun to play through a full campaign, but for the sake of just introducing you guys to all these different concepts of play um, at a very high level eventually. But there are distinct differences. Um, now remember, if you go against your alignment, and alignments are very simple here, right? It's not the nine-point alignment. It's uh, chaotic, lawful, and neutral. But lawful is basically considered good. Chaotic is basically considered evil. And then neutral is neutral. Um, and if you go against that alignment, you can lose a level mm -hmm. if you have an alignment shift. And it can happen fairly quickly. You know, uh, you and it generally says the GM should not be warning the player repeatedly that they should be allowed to choose the actions they want and then have the consequences of, you know what, your character is no longer, with that final action, um, you're no longer neutral, you're now chaotic. Lose a level. Then lose all the benefits of that level, etc. It's pretty brutal. But, uh, and, that, and that's especially so in first edition AD&D, &D, but that's generally how the older editions were. Like, nope, stick to your alignment or there'll be consequences. Um, we don't want uh, evil players in this. We're not doing chaos play, so stick with either lawful or neutral, please, on the alignment for this. And generally, try to play well with each other and have a good time. Don't don't be off, you know, doing your own thing. We want to try to stick together as a group so we can move the game along quickly. So it's going to be railroady because the assumption of this particular adventure is the GM has never DM before. I am literally just running it straight out of the book. I haven't done any prior prep and such. Yeah, I ran it a long time ago and stuff. I don't remember any of it. And so this is this is what uh, would be similar to somebody just trying to introduce somebody to role playing gaming for the first time who's never DM'd. What? Alignment. Who did that? You did. Chaotic? No, I didn't. You allowed it last time. No. Yes, you did. Chaotic? Yep. No. Yeah. I am basically chaotic good. If you do chaotic good, you can do that if you yeah. want, but you're not supposed to be evil. I'm not evil. Okay, then, then put good in there to change that. <laughs> we don't have to distinguish between chaotic good and chaotic evil. Uh, so you said the armor class uh, for regular clothes is nine? Yeah. I'm going to be a magic user. Um, okay, what's your intelligence? 
Okay. Okay. So take a look quickly at the magic user requirements there to make sure you can do that. I think it just limits your spell casting level. But I think as long as you have a nine or higher and whatever your prime requisite is, you're generally mm -hmm. automatic. You, you, you qualify. It's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, prime requisites. Prime requisite uh, is intelligence. If the magic user has an intelligence of 13 or more, bonus experience. That's it. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, it, it's, again, very simple. And uh, do I roll for hit points? Yes. What'd you get? Three. Okay, that's better than who, who had one. That was you. You have. I one. have one. Yeah. I have yet to die. That's why. <laughs> Me and Shane both have six. <laughs> and yeah. What level are we? Level one. First level for now. Yep. Okay. Then we'll bump you guys to third and do a different adventure. But this is the one straight out of the rule book. Okay. And how do I figure out my to hit roll? Your to hit you roll? started yeah. this. I was not tired and yawning. The, to hit roll, you don't <laughs> need to worry about. What, what do you mean your to hit roll? Oh, the hit roll down here. Oh, that's... Don't, don't worry about any of that. Okay. Yep, you don't need to worry about that. Again, there's more advanced stuff on there for the, the rule cyclopedia and master stuff for later. As you go up in levels, some of those things will matter more. Okay. I've got it here on the combat charts. Okay, and I was told to ask Jim what my spells are. Because I start off with two. Um, okay, so um, da -da -da -da. let's see here. Spells... You have Firefinger. <laughs> spell book. You have Glowstone. Giving magic user spells. When a player starts a magic user elf character, the player will ask you what spells the character has in the spell book. The magic user's teacher is a higher level NPC magic user, and the spell come, spells come from the teacher. The spell book assumed in the game can simply be a list of spells kept on the character sheet. You may play the role of the teacher if you wish, but this may, be also, may also be assumed. The system for spells allows you, the DM, to keep control of spells used in the game. For example, you may wish to avoid charm person spells. You can avoid it simply by not giving it to the characters. The first spell given should always be read magic. This allows the characters to read scrolls found and would be a basic part of the character's training. The second spell given to a beginning magic user character should be fairly powerful. You should avoid giving Detect Magic Light or Protection from Evil as the second spell, as these are nearly the same as the cleric versions easily acquired by a second or higher level cleric. You may give any second spell to a beginning elf character. The elf's many talents keep this, the, that character class balanced with the others, whatever spells are known. The player of an elf can feel useful in many ways. The spell is an additional bonus, not the character's only speciality. A magic user character is different. The magic user has only one specialty, spells, and suffers from low hit points, poor armor class, and severe weapon restrictions. For magic user characters, good and second spells it. are Charm Person, <laughs> Magic Missile, Sleep, all useful attack spells, and Shield, a valuable protection. The Floating Disc, Hold Portal, Read Languages, and Ventriloquism spells are useful. However, the player of a beginning magic user may feel useless as an adventure if miscellaneous spells, which includes Read Magic, are the only ones known. These spells make good third spells when the character reaches second level. You may wish to give one spell to one beginning magic user and a different spell to another beginner. This increases the number of different spells available to a party, however be sure to give spells fairly. Try to give one powerful spell to each to avoid complaints of unfairness. See how it literally spells it out mm -hmm. to the brand new DM who has no prior experience beautifully. So let's go ahead, would you prefer attack, defense, or miscellaneous spell? As your second one. What are my options for miscellaneous? Uh, just th that though that's your that's the choice you have to make, and then we will roll from there. Attack. Okay, go with attack. All right, so let's see, one, two, three. Go ahead and roll a d6. Five. Okay, so let's see. Um, Magic attack, missile. That's magic missile. So can he attack the darkness? Yes, you can now. <laughs> As you did yesterday. Yes. Okay. Or no, that was Joe did, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what else do you need to know? Uh, let's see. I think all you have left is equipment. Yeah. 
Okay. I think so. Imagine this light of darkness. Spell power to so attack the darkness. <laughs> that, that's all spell info. You can worry about that. And you can do that while we're gameplay. Um, so jump back to yeah, uh, how much money that. you get. Starting out, I think it was. Was it? What's that folder? Did everybody get? Was it two d six or what was it for your money? Mm. For starting money. Oh, it's in the player's manual, isn't it? Uh, I think and we got 2d6. Show me how much, P50. I, I remember player, not 50. having... Oh, that's the John, you have my other copies, right? From... John, you have my other copies of this, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to bring them back soon because I'm not getting them motivated, so I'll just return them. Okay. Sorry, man. Um, let me see the player's manual so I can tell you how much money. This is why everyone looks 10. ridiculous. Danielle, could you pass that down, please? I'm passing. Okay, yeah, if you can bring that back, it's definitely helpful to have more copies, especially yep. if you do more of this. Uh, do, 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 do. What you doing? Okay, what you so on page 50 Gala? is a checklist for making your character. So mm -hmm. you can just quickly go through that. You've got your stats, you've got your hit points. Yeah. Um, what was your constitution score? 12. Okay, so no adjustment. Yeah, you have no adjustments running. Okay, roll for money. Oh, it's 3d6. Sorry, I should have figured. It's all 3d6, nice and simple. Yep. Roll 3d6. Roll for it. Here, anything you need. Six. All right, so you have 60 gold. So, you know, no armor is armored class nine unless you have a dex bonus. A shield adds one. As a magic user, you can't really use shield, so just kind of out of luck there. Yeah. Um, and okay, I don't need to read to you about players and not characters. We got the different weapons now. You are limited in the weapons you can have. You saw that list, right? Dagger, so dagger, yep. All righty, then. Where's the equipment on here? Luckily, they have halfway decent index on the back, even though it's all on the DM's sheet. Uh, equipment, normal items, list and cost, P22, 29, 50. Okay. Yeah, the only big problem is the organization of these because it was more walk you through step by step. They don't make very good reference books, whereas the rule encyclopedia makes a better reference book. That is one heck of a Keltrop. Or dress like that. Oh, God, that just looks painful. What the, what? Die for oh. Caltrops. <laughs> Her dress lights up when he waves a magic wand at it. Cool. So what are you guys doing? <laughs> We're waiting patiently. Uh, for, <laughs> I'm looking at the Met Gala right, uh, pictures. Okay, well that's the normal list when you're going through the first adventure. <laughs> so the coin, the coin system here, Dan, works as the following: one platinum piece is worth five gold. Um, mm -hmm. two electrum pieces are worth one gold, or ten silver are equal one gold, or ten copper equal one silver. So ten copper equals one silver. So think as uh, copper as pennies, silver, silver as dime. nickels. Mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, nickels. Six. Um, and or no, dime. Dimes. Sorry, sorry. Um. Uh, electrum pieces as 50 cent pieces mm -hmm. and platinums as five dollar bills. Okay. So that's how the conversion system works. And that looks painful. A little bit trouble. It's like, I can't imagine that's uncomfortable to wear. Now let's do a D16. Yep. I can imagine how sweaty that would get. Union players should not be allowed to purchase equipment other than the items given on the list, player's manual, page 29. Okay. So they limited it. Okay, there it is. Complete list. So here you go. Right here, page 29, is what you can start with and spend your coins on. John, can you pass that down, please? Um, you'll be done making your character. Okay. Underlay, underlay. I'll try to be as quick as possible. We're, we're at okay, about 20 okay. minutes in right now. And again, if I was more on top of it, uh, error message from YouTube. Somebody was trying to join and got an error message from YouTube. Because mm. we are up and running live now. Click it, see what happens. Hopefully, I don't create a horrible sound. Uh, we'll be done making your Okay, yeah, that's 
It's working unless the link is bad here. I'm just trying to look more and more like the Hunger Games that weird celebrity events. Okay, it says it's good now. All right, good. All right. Just... So just YouTube being wonky. Oh, I can imagine the hole that would poke in your foot. So again, we're doing this as though it is the first time somebody was DMing right out of the book with very little preparation. But the good thing is this introductory adventure in the DMG of, of the 1982 Frank Metzer book is geared so that it can be done that way. You know, a little clunkily, but... For a group of new players who none of them ever played before, it's one of the best introductions I've seen out there, period. All right, so Dan, you're working on your equipment, mm -hmm. and you chose what class? Magic user. Okay, magic user, first level, what alignment? Level. Okay, good. And uh, no armor? Nope. No shield? We'll say armor class nine because no a DC benefit. Uh, three hit points. Yes. Your condition's good for the moment. And what's your primary weapon? Um, I'm guessing my dagger. On, okay. Unless we're talking spells. No. Yeah. No. We we, we mean dagger. Okay. Good. And all right. So I will reread for your benefit, Dan, the intro. It's not very long, but you know, but at least gives you the setting. It's 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 a dungeon crawl, right? You start outside and then you go inside, because again, this is assuming nobody's ever played before, so it's trying to introduce all the basics. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, this part of the realm of man was ruled by a magic user named Gygar, a man of great and mysterious powers. He ruled the lands from his mighty castle, Mistamir located at the foot of the mountains to the north. Gygar died after a long and peaceful rule, but no successor was named. Over the years, the unclaimed castle fell into ruins. Now, centuries later, the outline of the broken towers can still be seen from the town, ever beckoning to seekers of danger, fame, and fortune. You're gathered around a dinner table, or at least you had previously gathered around a dinner table in the Gold Dragon Inn in the center of town to discuss your plans. The inn was busy, filled with ruddy-faced townsfolk and other adventurers who were eating, drinking, laughing, and having a splendid time. You had all heard the tales told by others, tales of monsters lurking within the ruins and guarding rich treasures. None of you had been there before. But after an evening of discussion, you decided to try your luck in the castle ruin and plan to meet at dawn for the short journey. One special note. Dan, you'll want to catch this. Mm -hmm. The town rulers have offered a reward of 1,000 gold pieces for the capture of Bargle, the renegade magic user. The Bargle, death said? Bargle, B-A-R-G-L-E. Like death Bargle? Bargle, like gargle, yeah. <laughs> the death of Alina, a well-known cleric, was the last straw. They want to stop this danger once and for all, so keep your eyes open. Keep your lasers handy. <laughs> Trust no one. <laughs> so in the morning, you headed off, and it was only three miles from town, just a healthy walk past a local farmer's field. By the way, that farmer refused to let you guys use a wagon to carry unconscious people. Uh, mm -hmm. later when they were trying to go back. Uh, as you followed the dirt road past the farm, you greeted workers tending the crops. It was a lovely summer's day, and all the it all seemed peaceful. The landowner was sitting atop a wagon, watching the men, and chatted with you before you continued onward. Mentioned that he had no problem with monsters, and if any lurk in the nearby ruins, they stay there like respectable monsters should. Every night, however, he carefully locks up all his animals. After you had bid him a good day, you continued toward the ruins. As you approached, you see that saw that the walls were jagged and full of small holes, and a few large stone blocks had, t had tumbled to the earth, lying scattered around the ruins. A gateway, and so we've got the map here on the table there, Dan. Mm -hmm. A gateway, so we're going to point these as we go. <laughs> uh, a 
gateway seems to be the easiest entrance through the wall. Ten foot wide gaping hole it is in the wall off to your left, and could there could could be another entrance. You do not see any other entrances. The rest of the wall is crumbling, but few wide holes have opened. This outer area has no other interesting features. A sheer cliff, the face of a mountain, rises at the north edge of the ruins. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and share with what happened as you guys approached, uh, just go ahead a, and speak up. There was a, what was it called? A carrion crawler hidden in the hole underneath those doors. Okay. And he crawled up and tried to eat us. Almost was successful. Uh, then we left everyone who was affected back in town and me and Riley went out adventuring on our own and saw a bunch of kobolds right. that were running around inside of the castle and uh, I'd like to make one purchase with my money before we get there what? A stick with a wire on top of it that I can loosely tie to the end of a spear so that I can just stick it in the ground, pointing out in front of me. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know what you're doing there. So, this is the spear. Yes. And it sits in the ground, but I have this little stick here that I can put it down there. And it would just hold the spear up like that. Right, so if somebody charges, you've got it planted automatically. Mm -hmm. Streaming just stacked it up. Uh, OBS YouTube streaming just said. Connection successful. I'll put on my character sheet, one self spear. Well, we heard spear. windows make noises that was a bad noise. It said over here that OBS was successful at re whatever. Oh, and so for some reason, drop. the calculator so the dropped. Yeah, thank you, Windows. Oh, someone's messing with your stuff? <laughs> Are you being hacked again? Uh, don't speak of such things. Knock on wood. Did you do the exact same thing I just did? I don't know. I wasn't looking. Yes. Yes, he did. My mouth wasn't open. Oh, so right. close. <laughs> so let's, let's get underway here. I hit the table. My uh, head's too anyway, hard. People are asking if this is going to be available <laughs> later, because right now, you know, we stream live publicly. What we do is, to, as a thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, because we're a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, we first make all the recordings available to our uh, donors at the, at the higher levels. You'll, you'll see on our page, uh, our, at patreon.com forward slash RPG research. And we make that available for about a... A month? Uh, yeah, about a month before it's available to the general public. Oh my goodness, it hasn't come back up on the YouTube side, so YouTube is acting up. Uh, and then it becomes automatically available to the general public freely on our YouTube.com. What the Sick. heck? Yeah, YouTube's doing weird stuff. And it looks like it stopped working. I'll look on my phone. It says live now. Uh, no, it's it's working. But the ingest thing says it's not. It says we're not receiving data, no data. It's right. Unless oh maybe it's not. Maybe it's um maybe Behind. It's playing the older wave, 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 wave. See if that picks up. There'll be a delay, obviously, but um, yeah, so this is like when we did the extra life thing and it said nobody was watching and we had over 700 viewers. Yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> YouTube just lies to us left and right. We can't trust it. Uh, it says that we're Twitch live. Is, I don't know if Twitch is that much better. It says there's three people watching. Mm hmm. And it just had all of us waving. Okay, all right. So, it, yeah, it just, and now it just came back up. I don't know why I haven't gotten a notification that we're live yet. I, I did. All right. So everybody's, uh, you know, you see where you go. Where's your minis? Just go ahead and place them. So you guys were kind of in different locations. Uh, I guess Riley's going to poof disappear for now. He, he was went up back on the to wall, town, wasn't he? Yeah, he went back to town. Was he up high on the wall? You know, yeah, was he was you? right here, and then okay. I was I was hiding outside. <laughs> and do you want to be up on the wall, scouting out, or back behind the wall? Back behind the wall. Okay. I'm and trailed. Shane, where would you like to be? Wait, that's a monk. It could be a cleric. Um, 
But he's a magic user.
You're to blame. No, 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 no. Come on, so, come on, come on. None of that. Who's going to be down I can't at the be a bard? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little I'm, too anachronistic. I don't really have all that much protection. I might have protection, but I will die very quickly. So do we all And our mighty it? brave heroes debate. <laughs> we bravely ran away. <laughs> Why can't not? Chicken down. Turn to tell it, lad. What if we... Yeah. I want to go shoot somebody. Let's just go over there and shoot them. You guys catch them around the corner. Uh, what if I ran over here? By the edge of the... As you wish. What's it going to be? Oh, wait, that's farther than that. Uh, well, the color's going to have to make the decision. Yep, it's up to you guys. But let's, let's get the action moving along here. Mm -hmm. Let's not get stuck with analysis paralysis. Okay, cool. I want to go to the, the edge of the building. Okay. And then shoot from there. So that's my... Okay, part. so you're going to go from where to where? From right here. Through the hole. Through the hole. Okay. And then to the other side of the okay. building, which and is right here. And you do remember that Riley reported they all have bows. Yeah. Okay. As long as that's clear. Go for it. Well, would you like to wait until so, I start shooting so at them? Go? Yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for distractions. Okay, so you are you want to climb up? I'm up. Okay. You want to try and make your way to the... Uh, oh, yep, let's just start shooting down at them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Shane, what did you want to do? Well, I was thinking maybe I would try and open the double doors and distract them while you guys are shooting at them. They they barricaded the doors shut. Yeah. Uh, crap. Well, I guess I'm going to have to climb too then. <laughs> or... Well, you can either go through the hole and just into the courtyard. Oh, okay. Or... Because yeah, then... climbing the wall is extremely dangerous. Yeah. They're 50... Um, they're 10 feet wide, 50... Feet. Yeah, they're 10 feet wide, 50 feet tall... And very crumbly. Um, okay, well, I'll go over by the hole and count the kobolds to try and get him to come chase me. Okay, and I'm running. So, waiting for the caller. Okay, so, Shane, you're going to go to the hole and try to taunt the kobolds to come over. You're going to climb up the wall. I'm up on the wall. I just have to cross. You need to cross the wall. And you're making your way to the building to shoot them at an angle. Okay. Okay. All at the same time. So, what I'm going to say is, uh, you're going to try and make your way up the wall. And while you're doing that, uh, across the wall, mm -hmm. uh, across the wall, you're going to make your way to the building. Um, Once, uh, yeah. We're going to wait until uh, um, he's uh, you're in position before uh, we call the uh, we try to distract the uh, you know cobalts. I am going to pick up one of the rocks from the crumbling um, uh, um, infrastructure. That was a load bearing rock. <laughs> yeah, a, a fairly small one because I've got a sling and yeah. uh, my plan is uh, that uh, when you're in position and we're, it's time to distract the kobolds I want to fire the rock away from us to try and uh, make it seem like some type of disturbance let me know when you're actually talking to me we are sounds, I thought you were just planning with them still <laughs> oh no I'm telling you okay so hey dungeon master I'm oh. ready to, to take action at this point I was just assuming you guys are talking amongst yourselves oh. okay dungeon master we are ready to take action alright tell me what you're doing okay John's character is going to first try and make his way across the wall okay how okay. fast are you going to try to move? Full speed or safe speed? Um, safe speed. I'm trying to sneak up on him anyway. Okay, so what is your normal speed? Uh, my normal speed probably is... Probably 120, so probably 40 to go safer, more safely. Sure. Okay, so that would be four squares. To remember, these are 10-foot squares on this map. Where does it say my speed on here at yeah, all? That's the... That's pretty sure it's the default is 120, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct me if I'm misremembering. So 40 feet, right? And yep. each square is 10 feet. Correct. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and... Okay, I'll give you that for this time. All right, go All ahead. Right. Okay. okay. At, and at the same time, Danielle's character is uh, moving into position. So she's going to try to sprint across the courtyard. I was already in position. No, you were getting ready to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and... Did you want to sprint or did you want to... Yeah, see? I want to sprint. Okay. 
So um, go ahead and count that out before you move to see how far it is. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Mm -hmm. 70, mm -hmm. 80, uh, 90, 100, and uh, 120, that, 120. the corner of the castle right there? Yeah, one, this would be the corner. Okay. I want to be tucked around, so that's 130. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and make the move, and then we will see when you do the move if, they, if their shots hit you or not, because they will shoot at you the moment you come right out in the courtyard. Okay, I'm coming. Yeah. So... Just go ahead and, and put yourself there for the moment, but we will see if you made it there unscathed or not. And I'm going. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. And, <laughs> and uh, who's next? Caller? Oh, uh, we're going to wait until he's in position. Okay. So Shane and so let's see. Shane's character is Brother Caradoc. Can I get like, yes, a bunch of Dan, what's your character name? I'm from Blissbane. Blissbane, okay. The medium. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, so since they don't see anybody else, all four of the kobolds fire at uh, Amara as she runs across the courtyard. And I assume I cannot see the kobolds from my angle on the wall right Not now. Not yet. You see the arrows come flying out. Where'd all my dice go? I have all the brass ones. I took, I took, I took the brass ones. Here you go. Here you get the green ones. Because you're green with envy. Alrighty then. Oh, so. I'm wrong. And Amara, your current armor class is plus seven. seven. Yeah, I was wrong. All right. I'm right here. I, I can say something as a free action? Yeah. They don't really, you know, talking is an action, kind of. They don't really break it into all these different types of things. Okay. So um, you can, while you're running, say something, shout something, whatever. I was just, I was actually going to yell while she's running. You're supposed to wait until I sh fired. Okay, so yeah, you could shout that while you're yeah, running. I, I after she's already run mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Oh well. I misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. Communication. That, yeah. uh, that's a problem. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, Elf. Details, I hope none of them hit. I, 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 details. I'm not Did you make it. noise that attracted Cobalt's attention? We were going to wait until John's character was in position, but I'm going to do that next turn as much as possible. Mm. Try and pull them off of Danielle's character. Yeah, so I can peek Ooh, around the corner and peek, peek. I've got chart somewhere. Because that doesn't have the monster combat chart. That's interesting. Okay, monster hit tables. Here we go. All right. Up to you. So twelve. All right. First arrow hits. Second arrow hits. Third arrow misses. Fourth arrow hits. Have fun laying with my dead body. Seven. <laughs> so as you're running across, right, arrows coming at you. Oh, I'm dead. I'm deader than dead. You don't know yet. I have oh, one, one hit point. point. That's right. Never mind. <laughs> so you're running along and thunk, 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 midair. <laughs> Three arrows plunk into you. The first one, two hit points. The next one, one hit point, and the next one, two hit points. So you're negative three. Four. Four. So, because of miscommunication. Yeah, but you fall to the ground, three arrows in, your, in you, uh, just shy of the corner. Eh. And the cobalt's go, yay! Yep. Can so, I get a character sheet? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the beauty of this is it's really easy to make new characters. I'll start Very doing that. Quickly. The cleric can't Can save her? Can I be fired quickly and possibly heal her? Uh, negative you, four? You, uh, she's already dead. There's no negative hit points in the basic version of D&D. So unless you can resurrect. At first oh level. level. Yeah, so the answer is you're welcome to run up and try. <laughs> you want to run out in the courtyard and go try to save her, feel free. Good news is they've already fired this round. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need, they don't need to declare the action that they would wait, so you'd have to do that next round. Um, so go ahead and I want the basic sheet, not the advanced one here. Do you just want me to make a copy of the back sheet? Well, I, where did we... Oh, that's the wrong sheet. From? 
I you print them out. Of extra copies. You can play Riley's character. Is there a, I can play Riley's character. Can yeah, I? sure. Just go and take over Riley's. So that works. <laughs> there we go. There, there we go. To show up and tell like, hey, everybody, I'm a stranger. Can I join you? You look like a trustworthy group. Come join Wait. our party. Why do I have two <laughs> Riley characters? Huh? Norman and because he's played this two different times. The Mystic, and that's a fighter. So that the Mystic is that one. He's got. Okay. You need a miniature for him now. Yep. Go pick one. So what is Riley doing? Who was already on the corner above on the gatehouse, looking down <laughs> at the cobalts. Um, so he can have an action. Well, I can just use one of these two. Sure, go for it. John. All right. So he was right there, looking down <laughs> at the cobalts. They didn't oh, know he right. was there. The Oriental hat. Yeah. He chose for the so what does he choose to do? So first talk to your caller, and then the caller okay. gets to tell me. <laughs> a little bit of uh, telephone game there. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Four oil you want to throw daggers? Uh-huh. At the cobalts. You know, I don't have a pot So you notice this, this caller process creates more meta discussion than we are used to with our other games. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you want to throw daggers fun. at the uh, cobalts. Um, I'm guessing you... Did you want to wait? Oh, wait. Wait, no, no, no. I have rope. I want to noose one of them. <laughs> you drop a noose down and grab one. <laughs> Good luck with that. So you gotta admit it's creative. Did you want to wait for backup? Uh, okay, now, you're not supposed to be advising this caller unless your characters are talking to each other and Riley's not a situation where he can talk to you. Mm-mm. So you're just supposed to listen to okay. what Riley's declaring and then you tell me what Riley's doing. Okay. Now, if your characters are talking to each other, that's fine, but you can't be right now. Yeah. No, I'm going to make a noose, and I'm going to... She's going to make a nuisance of herself. But I'm bumped. But I want to do it when, when someone else is doing stuff. So they're not looking at it. Somebody else did do something. So they ran color. across and got shot. Oh, yeah, so they did. So, what are you doing? What 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 is uh, this character doing? Well, yeah, I got. I guess I got shot, so yeah. This, um, Riley's old, old character, then Dorian Yarg. Dorian Yarg. Dorian Yarg is going to Mystic. pull out his 50 feet of rope and okay. make a noose. Okay. And? And, uh, try to noose someone. Okay, like the nearest cobalt? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're going to be, like, try to be quick about it or try to sneak it down and then at the last minute, okay. I'm going to... Uh... Like, you're going to drop it suddenly and hope it falls around and, like, try to shoot it in them that way and yank, or try to slink it on down. I'm going to try and slink it All on right, down. so that'll take you a couple of rounds to extend out 50 feet. Okay. 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 While uh, she's doing that... Yes. He is trying to, you know, get to the edge of the wall. Yeah, he already did his move for this round. We're still in the same round. Oh. It's still round one. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Okay, the two of you are back. waiting. Okay. So, end of round two. Oh, no, uh, Shane. Shane uh, was waiting with uh, as well. Yeah. So, okay. so brother uh, Caradoc and um, Blizzbane were waiting this round, they declared. Mm-hmm. All right, round two. Where you're trying to... Yep, move up and yeah. start shooting. So Okay, so you're going to move up another four squares... Mm-hmm. Moving carefully. One, two, three, four. Well, you so you're going to squeeze in alongside. Oh, well, it's ten feet of space. I, right? I understand on very crumbly rocks. Remember, this whole wall feels like it could teeter over. If I can fire from one from ten feet back and still hit hit okay. people down there. Quick question: Can you move and shoot in this version of D and I'm not certain about that. So let's look at actions or attacks. Let's see. Combat for 12 hour under combat. Uh, P36, P50. <laughs> oh, it's in the players. It's Let like me the... see the players guide, please. Money oh, Python. man, I wish I had both copies. I'm sorry. I, know, I tried I to teach my son something. I, I failed. Did he just not even willing to engage? It's it's the... when he, We made the stipulation that he had to read the Choose Your Own Adventure part. And he wouldn't do that? No. I'm sorry. All right. Oh, well, if you didn't want it bad enough. Yep. Can't force it. Okay. Um, you don't have to make a morale check because you're not NPCs. Okay, there's movement. Um, that's not really telling me which of you. Okay. 
There's my. Uh, I just we we have a lot of assumptions from our other systems systems that mm -hmm. I'm just hesitant to jump into and assume it is the same because we've seen how this is different in many ways. So the question is, can you move and shoot in this game or not? Because some versions of D and D have been sticklers about that. Um, uh, skill movement. Initiative, first side goes first. Morale, uh, movement characters choose move this. Missile combat characters using missile and thrown weapons make their attacks. Well, that's, yeah, that's the, the order of things. That doesn't tell us how many. That just tells us in a round who gets to go when. Um, combat maneuvers, retreat. So you have fighting withdrawal, retreat, paired combat, encumbrance. It doesn't tell me combat maneuvers. Range, magic, encumbrance, containers, speed versus encumbrance. Wow. And it just kind of ends. <laughs> Surprise. Order of combat. Okay. So technically, yeah, move, then missile, then magic, then hand-to-hand. -hand. That's pretty standard. Water, oil. Surprise. Hate to kill the flow of the game, but we just don't know the system that well, and we're assuming we don't know it because we don't know it. Okay, movement. Single character moves up to 120 feet. Um, otherwise, it slows them down to 30. Groups move at the slowest character. Armor slows you down. Okay. Characters Combat move at one third. It's right here. Oh, the uh, movement in do parentheses is your one third rate actually during combat. Interesting. Okay. Character cannot do two things in a single round, such as run twenty feet and then attack. You would yeah. have to run twenty feet in one round, then attack okay. in the next round. That's what I suspected was the case with this system. So that's it. You've moved and you're there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see uh, uh, Dorian lowering a rope sneakily down. Okay. With the lasso at the end. A what length is that rope? Fifty. Okay, good. All right, and uh, the wall is fifty. Yes. Okay, just but the person's. I understand. That's fine. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that. Uh, <laughs> so caller, he's finished moving up to there. Um, there's a dead party member out in the middle of the courtyard. Mm -hmm. uh, so two of your party members you can no longer really see. What uh, is your remaining party member and you doing? Talk to Shane. Shane, do you want to try and make them well, distract I'm going to try and talk to Cobos to try and distract them so they're confused so we can mess with their head from right now. I'm, I'm trying to get them to run towards the hole so they're out in the open more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Shane's character is going to try and... Are you talking to me? Yes. DM? Are you talking to me? Yes. Yes. DM? Yes. Shane's character wants to start the uh, um, shouting and taunting the kobolds to try and. So he's going to step them. through the gap in the hole and try to get their attention. And how far out does he step? Shane didn't tell me anything about okay. stepping out from the hole. So he's going to shout from outside. Gonna, I'm just going to stick my head out. I don't want to make myself more of a target than me. Sorry. So you're going to stick your head through the hole of the wall, but just your head and shout epithets at them. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it says the caller is a player who announces to the dungeon master what the group of characters the party is doing. Caller must check with every player to find out what all the characters are doing and then tell the DM quickly and accurately what they plan to do. The caller does not tell the others what to do. The caller merely reports what was going on. The caller's job is to find out the party order, the way of the characters are lined up or grouped during normal travel. Caller should also report the movements of the group, such as we'll go northeast through the woods or we'll turn right at the next corridor. Battles are always more complicated. The DM should take time to check. Okay, check with each player. Okay, so in combat mode, it changes uh, instead of handling it to the caller. So, so, so sorry. Okay. This is, again, we're learning the nuances of this version of D&D. Okay. You may have games without callers if the Dungeon Master is willing to ask each player what each character is doing and make notes to remember the actions. That's usually easier and more organized if one player acts as a caller. That's interesting because we don't really do that much anymore. Nope. We have seen an aim and tour. Okay, so non-combat, when you guys are making plans and moving along, it's mm -hmm. one person. During combat, we go back to one person at a time. So, Shane, 
You stick your head out, and in what language are you taunting? Um... Well, I'm going to try in common because I don't okay. really think I have the ability to speak. Sure. Normal. All right. What do you want to, how, how do you try to taunt them? Uh, kobolds are short. Kobolds are weak. No one's scared of kobolds. No one likes them. You're all useless, et cetera, et cetera. Is that the way your character calls it out? Just kind of a matter of fact list? Okay. Oh, I'm here. Um... <laughs> Foul miniature villains, thou art pathetic and weak, and thy deity is dead. There's nothing about <laughs> languages, by the way, the character sheets. Okay. <laughs> thy deity is dead. That okay. is beautiful. <laughs> that works. So you do that. You see uh, one of the kobolds poke around with a, a, a bow and try to take a pot shot at you. Uh, you leave your head sticking out there or pull it back? I think I'm going to pull back because okay. I'm trying to draw them to me. I don't want them to have a chance to shoot at me. All right. All I did was kind of lean out and take a shot at you, a very haphazard shot, and short of a natural 20. <laughs> and you hear a bow snap and a whack on his thumb, and he curses and cobalt. <laughs> you got what you deserve, foul Ben. <laughs> you sticking your head back out to say that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to, uh, uh I'm going to, uh, try and, uh, throw a rock, um, uh, towards uh, the entrance area that we're, where, where we came from, mm -hmm. to try and make some type of commotion over there. That's a heck of a throw. I've got a sling. Okay, uh, well, so what's your range on your sling, then? Uh, I don't know. Uh, there there's no a issue. quick equipment, uh, oh, sorry, I've got it here. Yeah. <laughs> Quick weapon list. No initiative. No initiative. Chain's gone. Yeah. Chain's back. There is... There is initiative, P58. I thought we already rolled that last time. I don't know. It wasn't there last time. Yeah, okay, P58. So initiative is... How is their version of initiative? Um, when encounter begins, you must first, you must, act, might act first and mind, blah, 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 Okay. DM rolls 1d6 for the monsters, and one of the players rolls 1d6 for the characters. How did they call it? Yeah, it doesn't matter which player rolls, whoever gets the prior number. Um, yeah, we had already rolled last time, and the players had initiative, that's why the cobalts were Okay, we're good. But okay. I was doing an order of missile and stuff like that. But, yeah. Okay, so we are asking about the damage of your, or not the damage, the range, the range of your sling. Yeah. So fire not... table, sling is short 40 feet, um, up to 80 feet is medium with no penalty, and up to 160 feet minus one. How many feet out is that? I mean, you are trying to hit the side, so you're going, side of a barn. So you're going to yeah. go through here? No. Yeah. I'm firing from there. Oh, you're going to poke through? He's going to be you're in gonna, the wall. You're going to... The 10 feet. Okay, and you're trying to hit one of them, or? No, I'm just trying to make a disturbance away from the... Okay, and what, just hit the ground? Yeah. Or a bush or something. There's no bushes, really. You just try or like a big rock randomly. on that side, or anything. Okay. Yeah, basically make a sound. You want to just hit the opposite wall of the keep? Yeah. All right. Okay, so fire away. Okay. See if you just fumble it or something. And mind you, I know that I'm not proficient in slings, but I figure I could still use it. Oh, okay. Is fumble a thing in the... I don't think it is. I don't think it actually is. I rolled a seven. Okay. So you you don't hit anywhere near where you wanted to hit, but you still hit the wall, and it makes a clatter oh, sound over here? <laughs> against the keep. Against the keep, yeah, mm -hmm. against the castle wall. Yeah, I don't see anything about fumble. How about miss? Missile fire, modifiers, missile weapons... Yeah, I don't, because remember, they they really, I don't think they had fumbles or crits. Yeah. I don't think there's either, because again, very, it's much simpler than, and really, Gygax was against the whole crit thing anyway. Well, until he did Boot Hill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, feel free to see if you can find something that says otherwise, but I'm pretty sure yeah. there's nothing there. Um, I, it's just, you're just going to miss. All right. Uh, so, Clatter's against there. 
Um, and so that's missile. Um, let me see. None of them are looking up above them as the noose is coming down, and the other fellows looking down at them as well. Um, uh, what is your character's name, John? Al. I'll be. I'll be underfoot. I'll be underfoot. <laughs> well, right now you're overhead. But I'll be underfoot is above. He's uh, under my feet. With Dorian Yarg. And the cobalts do not seem to be wearing at the moment, though there are rocks kind of falling from the, the wall here and there. They haven't fallen in their direction to get let them know that there's somebody up there. Um, they don't see anything else other than the one who took a pot shot. They don't see anybody else to shoot at. You do see when uh, you guys see from your vantage point. When the rock clattered, the other three who hadn't fired yet looked that way with their bows uh, at the wall, but didn't see anything, and so didn't do anything besides stay hidden safely here. Uh, your noose is now hovering just above the nearest cobalt. Okay. Um, and that's the end of that round. Oh. That's the end of round two. Round three. I'm not the caller anymore, friends. <laughs> um, so, John, you were doing a missile weapon, right? Yes. So, how heavy are cobalt? Not that heavy. Forty they're, pounds. They're yeah, they're they're kid size, little kid size. Would it make a good counterweight? You could pull yourself down off this crumbly wall, yanking on them. On the other side, <laughs> counterweight. How tall? What size are you? <laughs> okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Letter, letter, Curiosity letter. here. Remember, like that conversation last Wednesday. I'm just, just thinking. I'm thinking out loud right here, though. I understand? Um, you are human. I'm a mystic level one. Okay, so yeah. human. Um, so you probably weigh about three times as much. Uh huh. So, but I could bring down the wall on you. So, what are you gonna do? You know, try to let, loop that lasso. Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna like okay. give it a swirl. So now that it's gotten all the way down, you realize you're gonna need to lay down on your belly because the amount of rope you had to loop up and how short the cobalts are, you've run out of rope. You need to get down on your belly and reach it down to get Back it to to go over. No, you've got room. You got ten oh. feet wide up here. Well, even with him in my square. Yeah, because ten, ten feet. Ten feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's got five feet. You've got five feet. So you get down on your belly, yeah, and then you give it a shot, and then uh, yeah, I give and it a you swirl. Get on your belly first, and next round you'll get okay. to give it a shot, and you're trying to loop it over. Yeah. It'll Ooh. be a very difficult to hit. <laughs> very fifty feet of rope. Do you realize the intricacy of this? But we'll let you try. You can try it. I figure it's worth it. Okay, All right. it'll be interesting if it works. All right, uh, what are you doing? If nothing else, I got something to lower him down I, with. I don't know if <laughs> this is a thing. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not a thing. But I would like to, because I'm afraid that if I fire now, I'm going to mess it up because they're going to react. Mm -hmm. So I like to ready in action. As soon as she yanks up on that thing, I'm going to fire at the second cobalt. Okay, that'll be the next round. But you're going to wait for her character to take action before you take action in the next round. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. that I don't startle them and Understood. she doesn't yeah, get in. That helps with the attack order. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Shane, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to poke back out and say, ha, you missed foul guns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and your deity is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you leave your head out or pull your head back again? Oh, no, I'm pulling back. Okay. <laughs> I just want to be clear about this. And Dan, what's your character doing as he's taunting? I am going to pick up another stone. Okay. <laughs> and tink against... Okay, these are just stones laying around, right? You're not yeah. using your bullets. I'm not using my bullets. Yeah, and again with non-proficiency. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And where did the sling come from? I bought it. Okay. All right, yeah. just make sure. It was on the list. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> I rolled a five. <laughs> All right, so even worse shot than last time, but it thunks against the castle wall. You can hit the broadside of a castle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hit the broadside of a barn from the inside. <laughs> All right. Um, and you guys see again, they kind of jolt and look that direction each time he does this. Uh, the taunting makes the front one take another shot at him. Um, Wasting ammo. So, and Shane, you've got carefully. extra armor class because you're hiding behind the rocks. But what is, you see, your base armor class is eight? Yes. 
So, I lost that page. Right. I don't know why it doesn't have the monster combat chart on here. That's kind of dumb. Is it on the outside? That's the master character. Is there a one? That's all XP. It, yeah, I, somewhere I had the, the lower on one, but I, I, it, it's disappeared over the decades. Um, okay, reference chart. Okay, monster chart. Here we go. It's just the back of the TM's book. All right. Um, narrowly misses you and clatters against the stone like you barely pulled your head back in time this time. So that one was really close. You were one point away from being hit. Just so you know. What's that? <laughs> if your nose had been just a little longer, you would have lost it. I won't stick my head out that time. <laughs> okay, don't. Okay. Um, all right, and you did your thwack. All right, it is, they still hold their action. No, again, they jump each time that stone hits the wall. It is now round three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Four? Four. Round four. four. Yeah. Round four. All right, you're going to try that. I'm That's going to attack, so it'll go a little later. You're waiting, though, on your missile attack mm-hmm. to go after uh, are you going to thwack the wall again? Thwack. Roll again. Four. Four. <laughs> you you're going miss down my wall, Easter. It goes up and over and on the roof somewhere, clattering without much noise. Okay. You managed to completely overshoot it this time. I missed the barn. <laughs> <laughs> the broad side of the castle. All right. Yes, uh... Shaniel's unstoppable. I can't guess that's him. Your breath smells of faintly of elderberries, and I thought in a general direction. So somebody's paraphrasing Monty Python. <laughs> and your father smelled like elderberries. <laughs> so, uh. I am on clock when was here. I guess it's going to be up to uh, you to try the noose attack. Roll really high. What'd you get? A 20. Natural 20? <laughs> Natural 20? Yes, that's Confirmed. Hold it up to the camera, folks. No, well, it meant in the dice thing. But oh, anyway. yeah. I didn't natural, know. natural 20. That's about what it would have taken to do this outlandish maneuver. So you kind of wriggle and wriggle. Flows over. The cobalt just kind of looks down like, huh? And the next thing they know, their compatriot goes, yep, up into the air with a, yep. All right, you are dangling a cobalt uh, a few feet up. Now, it's only a few feet up because you really at risk standing up on this clattery surface. But, yeah, you just lifted a few feet off the ground by its neck. I'm going to say that's one hit point of damage now for that. As it's slowly strangling you down. Very slowly. But I'm not leading. I want to. I want to. I'm not going to stand up. Okay. But when I grabbed it, yeah. I pulled myself. Okay, so kind of to a squatting position. Oh, yeah, at least away from the okay. edge. That's fine. Roll your decks. <laughs> Roll low. What'd you get? 19. Okay. So you go to do that maneuver, and some of the stones slip out from under your rear and feet and such, and go clattering down like a big chunk of stone mm-hmm. falls out from under you. Roll a I... dex check to not fall with it. <laughs> I was going to say, and now I've become the pinion. <laughs> Five? Okay. Yeah. So you manage at the, la- the last minute to kind of clamber on and hold on to the remaining piece of stone there, but you knocked a big brick of stone down. That hits and hit the ki- cobalt you're dangling. <laughs> with a big old brick. <laughs> so you hear a crunch. Just a Do I still have a hold of a cobalt? Well, something yanked on the rope. <laughs> You'll have to look. You saw what happened. Yeah. There is a rope under the stone, squished flat. It, it was a big piece of wall that fell. So she would lose the rope. Crunch. The, the rope went yank. Well, you lost height because of the, the chunk okay. that fell out, so you managed not to fall down with. You lost a few feet, and so you still have the rope, and you felt it tug, <laughs> but you held on to it, and you didn't fall down. You saw it just get splat. The compatriots now all three look up to see you. Firing an arrow. You've got initiative, so. Are you going to make a noise? So Which one? Uh, two, three, or four? He, he had ready. One is two. splatted. I had <laughs> declared two. Okay, that's um, fine. 
By chance, did, changed. did the um was there any markings on the on the rock saying like Acme? <laughs> <laughs> And I am going to be using the angle of this wall as my defense. Okay. Meanwhile, arrows come down to the second guy with a 13, which is armor class 6. What? No, you're attacking. Mm-hmm. I, I don't need to know your armor class. So no, I'm me. aiming a 13 hits an armor class 6. But that's, that's... Oh, I see what you're saying. You're... Um, okay, you're which... I'm a halfling firing a bow. Halfling, where did I put that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Halfling firing missile against. I get a plus one for bows. Okay, don't don't confuse me with, with declaring because I have to go by their armor class, not what armor class you think it's going to hit. Um, just You just tell me what the role is, and I've got okay. the table here. You're not helping me by doing the calculations for me. Okay. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, a 13. Um, and that's a radically different number. Oh, you know what? This might be the problem between the masters and here. Let me look at the chart here. It might be radically different. Because I got a way different number here for you as a halfling. Um, that was for the rules of Cyclopedia, so maybe it's different. That's the problem. They said the rules of Cyclopedia and the combat charts are a little different. And the master's chart might be different as well. Yes, yeah, so, so, hmm. I'm confused on that. Let's look here. Because again, we're trying to compare and contrast between Rule Cyclopedia and the different editions. <laughs> Uh, I just <laughs> yeah, that went splat, on Uncle Scooby. <laughs> well, now my first. According to this, um, mm. a thirteen would be out of six, anyways. So that is different because uh, it was a fourteen in the rules encyclopedia. Yeah, that's the problem. Is we've got conflicting. Oh crap! So I hit our class. Five. Yeah. Five or higher? Yeah, any number that's five or higher I would have hit. That's weird that they give us that, because that seems like something the DM would need. Yeah, I'm not even sure why that's even on my character sheet. I don't know. It just happens to be there, and we filled it out. Oh. Using the rules encyclopedia. To hit roll needed. Oh, that's the rules. That's because of the rules encyclopedia. That, that's again these big differences between mm-hmm. the different editions. Um, okay, well, anyway, that's a hit. What's your damage? Um, I, Short bow, so 1d6. Okay. Six. You ski from the head, so like this, mm-hmm. looks up, right between the eyes, out the back of the head, and falls backwards. And that is lean back, so I'm less of a target. All right. <laughs> and they both take shots at you, the two remaining ones. Um, and then I got to do a morale check. Actually, I'm supposed to do a morale check. Ah, morale yes, check. that's right, morale check. Because you finally attacked them. <laughs> well, yeah. One got splatted, the other one got killed immediately. So now it's a morale check. Yeah. When half of your party dies like that, <laughs> morale well, is Well, the moment you do combat, you're supposed to do a morale check for the NPCs and monsters. Oh, okay. Immediately. The moment it's, they're engaged. Well, so, that was one heck of an engagement, It is an too. optional rule. Morale check is optional, it says. Okay. Morale is a measure of a creature's courage, loyalty, and high spirits. It is optional in your first games. The beginning dungeon master should not use morale until all the other game mechanics have been learned. Morale should be added after everyone, both DM and players, has participated in two or more group games. I love how this just spells it out for you beautifully. You know? In combat, any creature may try to run away or surrender. Character may do this, but this is the decision of the player. No PC can be forced to surrender or run if the player doesn't want to. To determine whether an NPC or monster wants to surrender or run away, the DM uses the creature's morale score given with the monster's description. Good morale, a high score, indicates a willingness to keep fighting. Bad morale, a low score, means that the creature may panic and try to get away from combat. The morale score is used when the DM checks morale at certain times by rolling dice. How to check morale. When a morale check is necessary, the DM rolls 2d6. 
If the result is greater than the creature's morale score, the creature will try to stop the fight or get away from it. So just to give you guys an example with these kobolds. Beep, 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 beep. And for those of you who don't know, these are dog-faced kobolds, yep. not lizard-faced. Correct. Um, they only have a morale. They have actually pretty high morale of eight, but not super high. But I mean, compared to like a zombie, which has a morale of 12. <laughs> Does a zombie even have any knowledge of quitting? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> giant or rats. Giant yeah. rats have a morale of eight. So, that, so kobolds have the same morale as giant rats. They're related. <laughs> Yellow mold has no morale. Oh, and yet, yet other kobolds have a lower morale. So it depends on the kobolds in the different locations. Mm. So for this group, ooh, and there's harpies. Is it the morale is seven? Oh. Spoiler and, alert! And <laughs> so these Whoa, have actually pretty low morale. Carrying Crawler had a morale of nine, by the way. These have a morale of six. Now, we're not doing it yet because this is supposed to be the beginning of the adventure. But let's just see what would have happened. So that this one is would have fled. This is the first real combat. And that one would have fled, yeah. So we're not to, as new GMs, not supposed to do it. Oh, um, okay. But Ooh. if I was running a morale check, both of them would be suing for feasts or fleeing or something at this point. They would have failed the morale check. Because I rolled above that six on both of them. Mm -hmm. So, just sharing, because again, we're not going to get a chance to do every single variation in our limited sessions of this. But that's why we're sharing the, the rules and differences about the system. All right. So now you know. And so you're supposed to check morale. Uh, morale check is not made for any creature with a morale score of 2 or 12. Oh, you don't do it if it's 12, you just don't do it. Morale of 2 means that the creature will not fight. A score of 12 means that the creature will not quit once it has begun to fight. For all morale scores from 3 to 11, a morale check is made twice after combat begins. For a single creature encountered alone, a morale check is made when the creature is first hit, taking one or more hit points of damage. When the creature is reduced, okay, that's when they're traveling alone. Mm -hmm. A group of creatures, when the first death on either side occurs, either a monster or character, or when half of the monsters are not free to act, killed, magically, sleep, or controlled. So, theoretically speaking, a group of goblins could come up there, shoot one of us, and then panic because they succeeded in killing one of us. Theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily they panic. It's that they decide to get out of there. Yeah. But they don't want to stick around after they shoot. <laughs> so Because they're now afraid of your wrath. All of four them. of them could have got, you know, booked it mm. once she went. <laughs> yes, theoretically. It yeah. could have happened. That would have right. been a bad um, <laughs> So, first shot missed, second shot hit. Dang, good thing so I was touched was, back. Yeah, it was a natural 20. That's okay. the only reason it hit. It just mm. caught you, like, just as you were ducking down. Only one hit point, so yeah. it just kind of skimmed you. You can't make me uglier. <laughs> <laughs> Want to bet? Freddy Krueger? <laughs> I got a four comeliness. <laughs> it could be a three. <laughs> Watch and out, you're going to have that a three comeliness, I get superpowers. But you don't <laughs> die with a one comeliness. <laughs> I just... I'm already yes, horrible. You're Medusa at that point, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people I get superpowers. <laughs> All right. So you got a little scratch. So your character is on the quest to find the ugly stick. Yes. <laughs> that you might have been beaten with as a child. All right. And snap it. I'm <laughs> going to break it off in your face. Stop making fun uh, of me. Shane, what are you doing? I'm not an God. animal. Um, Sorry, not Shane. Close enough to Brother Caradoc. You are still a good 100 something feet away by that hole, unless you want to get closer. You did hear a loud thud, you know, like clatter, thud, crunch, <laughs> yip, all kind of at once. It's a good thing I have pretty hits for the both. I'm, I'm going to close to try and do melee, and I'm just going to run out, and I'm going to scream, The gods have judged you and found wanting! Alright, so you're going to run full speed? Yep, full speed towards him. Which okay, one so is 120. Him? This one. Yep. Right? Yep. Or is that you? I'm the magic user, so... so no, you, you yeah. got right. that's the clerk. Okay, so 120? Yeah, 10... 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120. And just in, right next to the kobolds. All right, so he comes running up, and he get right up there, right in front of the, of the kobolds, who are looking up with their bows and quickly reloading them as you come running up. And um, you say... And he, and he already yeah, yelled at as he was approaching. 
Oh. You have been judged and found wanting, and your god is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, um, <laughs> b- 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 Blizzbane. What are you doing? He's being chaotic. <laughs> I am trying to decide whether or not I should I'm use doing. my one spell. <laughs> I think I'm a... you wall again, man. <laughs> oh, oh, you allowed chaotic good on here, too. So this has is has to be good though. Oh, I, how much more chaos can I, I cause? Know, the, the, the... the funny thing is that when you said it, we're not going to worry about the alignment. Was what you said during the very. Oh, first... did I? I yeah. Didn't remember yeah. that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pick up a, another rock because that is going to matter later at immortals level <clears throat> and stuff. Big mm. time. And uh, I want to come. I shall be judged. Shane's character went to one side of the wall. I want to go to the other side of the wall. You're going to run around to the front. <clears throat> run around to the front. Okay. And... Where it's barricaded, where the doors are completely shut. They had shut the inner doors completely. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Those doors are shut. They were open when you guys first approached. You weren't okay. here, so you didn't know. Oh, I thought when the, you guys spot the carrier were... crawler, they closed them. So there's these doors and those doors. Right, right, but there were two sets of doors, and one was laying outside, and then they closed it. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. those doors are shut, so you can't, you can't, yeah, that, that's a barrier you can't get through. Oh, okay. Yeah. And actually, there are 40-foot doors. They're huge. Okay. They weren't 20-foot. They were 40-foot. There you go. But you get the idea. Well, they're more like this. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, they're 20 feet high, too. That's that's why I said yeah. they're more like this. Yeah. So, knowing that information because you weren't here before, what do you yeah. do? In that case, I'm going to come out to maybe about here. Okay. Will I be able to see 20, them from... Uh, 20 feet. You can see the the back, the farther, the one in the furthest in the rear. Okay, would I then be able to cast magic missile? You can you can move or attack. You can't move and attack. Okay, yeah. in that in case, game. I'm gonna cast magic missile because it you know creates the arrow, and I can release it later. That's what mm-hmm. the rules said when I was looking at. It magic says missile. that. Yeah, you can cast and then release it later. Yeah, it actually says that. Yes. Look, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Is magic missile still an auto hit? Yes. Okay. You can cast it now and release it later. That is uh, wow. I would have loved to have had that. It's a glowing <laughs> arrow created and shot by magic, which inflicts one d six plus one. So there's a lot more than the D and D version. The creature strikes. Now the spell is cast. So after the spell is cast. The arrow appears next to the magic user and hovers there. This is like the cartoon version of the <laughs> magic missile. That's where they got it from, was the basic D&D. Okay. The arrow appears next to the magic user, hovers there until the magic user causes it to shoot. When shot, it will automatically hit any visible target. It will move with the magic user until shot or until the duration ends. The magic missile actually has no solid form and cannot be touched. The magic missile never misses a target, and the target is not allowed a saving throw. For every five levels of experience, you get two more missiles created by the same spell. <coughs> wow. In a 150-foot range. Yeah. So it takes a full Dang. round. So you're created now. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's, it, the duration is one turn, so I have to... you got plenty of time. you got ten rounds. Okay. Yeah, that's plenty of time. Okay. That's that's cool. So yeah, I'm gonna cast that's, magic missile. <laughs> that's a, I like that magic missile better than this, right? That's yeah. just kind of. I'm waiting for it. it's like predator on the shoulder thing, right? Like, <laughs> I'm waiting. For oh it. no, it's more like what's his face's uh uh whistle uh arrow. Um, non dunes whistle. Non dunes whistle arrow. If you watch Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy, you'll understand. I've seen for sure. I think I've seen both two. Yondu. I don't know. Yeah, Yondu's yeah, Yondu the guy with the, uh, the vein up there, and he whistles, and a little arrow thing shoots around and follows. That guy, okay. Yeah. Didn't he die in the first one? No, no he died in the second, second one. one. Okay. Yep. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been out for years, hasn't it? Doesn't matter. These people okay, get sorry. mad. Right, people, get, sorry. people get pissed off at okay, spoilers. So, yeah, now, now, well, now you uh, give me enough description. I just don't know things. I don't know your fault that long. Anyway, that's very cool. You now have a hovering <laughs> magic missile arrow. Very cool. <laughs> Um, and I guess that means when you go to attack, you can move and release it at the That's same the plan. time. Yeah. Are you going to whistle? That's kind of cool. 
No. All right. <laughs> Dang. Uh, that is the end of round four. We are now round five. Boy, we're taking some long rounds here. But oh well. <laughs> Uh, it is the missile priority of whoever is going first. You're holding onto a rope. You can move first. So moves, then missile, then combat. So moves. Do you want to go down? So conversation. Okay, you're getting ready to shoot. Uh, are you moving? Yes. Okay, where do you move? One of the um, uh... <clears throat> How far out do you want to uh, move? How far out can I move before I see... One kobold. If you move out about 30 feet, you'll be able to see the one in the far back there, number four. Okay, then I move out 30 feet. Okay. And then release the magic missile into him. Mm-hmm. All right. Roll a d6. It's, it's automatic. Max damage. Seven. Yes. All right. So you're ready to take a shot, and all of a sudden, this arc of... Oh, wait. Hang on. Wait a minute. There is still magic versus missile, as far as firing order. Un- unleashing. I'm... Yeah. Well, because he just has to say go or release it, <laughs> wouldn't that be the same speed as a missile? I'm just I'm just trying to determine here because again, I'm not familiar with the system. So. Well, and I I was gonna kind of pull on the rope just to see if it's sturdy. That's fine. See if I can slide down it. <laughs> yeah. Something groans. <laughs> I will wait. Yeah. There is nothing alive under that rope. There is just goo. <laughs> nothing but goo. Mm. Okay, morale check, movement, including defensive movers, missile fire, then magic. So technically, you get to go first. And you were going for number three, right? Yep. Okay. So go ahead and take your shot first. Sorry, I just... 17. That would be a hit. Roll your damage. One. Okay. You <laughs> scratch him. Then an instant later, you see a glowing bolt of energy slam right through the chest and out the back of Cobalt Number Four, who then slams against the little wall there and expires in a heap, dead, sizzling with a gaping hole in his chest. As a free action, I know it's not a thing, but I say I don't have to miss. <laughs> All right, and you're yanking on the rope. I yanked. It is taut and does not move. This is, is how you're getting down. Okay, <laughs> that's almost vertical. <laughs> Ow, ow, my hands! Yeah, that would be extra. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, and how strong are you? I have an 11 strength. Oh, what could possibly go wrong with that? 50 feet! All right, Shane, what are you doing? Um, uh, the missiles got there, but the one right next to you, closest to you, got wounded by an arrow, but it's still standing. But this magic thing shot past you and killed the other kobold before you could finish your swing. Um... I shall smite the remaining one on top of his head in the name of... I can't remember who my god is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want us to roll for you or you want to roll for yourself? It's St. Right. No, Cuthbert. I got my camera here. Hold on. All right. <laughs> I forgot my gun. <laughs> I don't think we've been assigned deities. <laughs> no, we haven't done that much. Pick a god. This is Pick a god. Deity. That all kind of comes later. It's all more advanced stuff. Because again, it's more than one layer. What's that? 18. 18, yeah. all right. With what weapon? Uh, I've got a mace, don't I? Mace, yes. And a sling and lead shot, silver shot. So hit him with that mace. So and the name the of whatever mace, deity you have. <laughs> you do 1d6 of damage. I think almost everything's 1d6. All right. No. Mm-mm. There's a whole chart. Uh, oh, okay. O D and D everything was one D six. Got a three. All right, that is enough to crush its skull from the combined arrow hit, <laughs> and it is now dead. All four kobolds are dead. Victory is yours. Victory. Thomas spoken. Your god is dead. And um, I'm going to prepare to roll up a new character as I uh, 
So I just, <laughs> put something on your hands. Now we put a piece of leather over it. All right. And <laughs> you drop that just, vertical like that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm using it to hang onto the leather, and I'm trying to climb down. Okay, you're, you're going to repel in a controlled way, not just free fall. Oh, okay. hell no. Not, not that straight line. That's what I... <laughs> All right, still a dex check, though, because otherwise you will do a free fall. <laughs> New character time. <laughs> Seriously, I only got five hit points here. Not, Not 20. 20! That's bad. I know. So what I do is <laughs> I, six per ten feet. I grab the thing, uh-huh. and I go wow. down to leg off to repel, uh-huh. and I go... Ah! <laughs> New character! Well, we'll see. You have how many hit points? I have five. It's so you can't feet. survive. <laughs> Yeah, if you roll a one on every I, single I, one, I am dead. still dead. But let's roll it anyway. Three. He could land a seven. He could land on a cobalt. Yeah. Ten. Or on Shane. Fifteen. <laughs> Seventeen hit points total. Ah, splat! My back to the breaks over the break. <laughs> All right, on top of the rock. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sandwich. It's a stone sandwich. <laughs> yeah, cobalt and, and halfling. Cobalt and halfling stone sandwich. <laughs> ah, crack! Splat! I actually have a decent dexterity, but that was not that a, was a bad survive. roll. Um, yeah. Okay, so you hear his body break, and you see him break in, in reverse. Um, uh, and this horrific experience happens right next to you, uh, uh, Brother Caradoc, as he splats right next to you on the rock with a horrible crunching sound. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I got nothing. <laughs> his eyes clap. You're not even his eyes stare up and die into death. <laughs> He's not even going like, to give me my last rites. He's just going to let me. <laughs> Pathetic. All right, what are you doing, magic you user? Oh, know, have fought bravely. Close his eyes. Okay. Um, uh, I would like to, um, uh, as honorably and as respectfully as I can, upon seeing the death of someone who I barely knew, <laughs> walk over to the wall and okay. give him. So you walk all the way up to there? No, no, no. Oh, to, that wall. To, to that wall. Okay. And uh, uh, respectfully give my give him my last rites, which is. <laughs> Because <laughs> oh, okay. right. it was a horrendous sound inside. Yeah. Okay. And it's just wrenching off the okay. ground. Alright. That that seems reasonable to me. Uh-huh. I'm gonna climb down the other side. <laughs> okay, what do you do with the rope? Just drop it. Just drop it. Okay. It's obviously back. not worthless. What? You let you let go your way back and climb down? Yeah. Okay. She let go on me. She killed murder. No. Murder. No. Murder. No. murder. <laughs> Roll a dex check to make you down safely. As I also need to roll a new character. 17? Out of? 11. 13? <laughs> ah! What hit points do you have? <laughs> Five. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys learn a lesson from this with your low level characters. Never climb walls? Well, 50 foot walls! <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> Strategically, it was a brilliant idea. Cost risk analysis. <laughs> well, that's why I thought it was making it easier. All. With all right, so six, <laughs> nine, <laughs> fifteen. The sandwich is getting thicker. <laughs> Sixteen, nineteen. <laughs> But this is over by the hole. So you're there wrenching. And then you're, ah, 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 and rocks fall. And, ah, oh, right next to you by the hole. Splatting, <laughs> totally dead. And knock down a bunch of rocks. Roll your decks to avoid being hit by a falling rock. Because it says that explicitly, that climbing these could take out your compatriots. Mm. If they're too close to the wall. 13. Out of? 9. <laughs> oh my god. The wall kills us. How many <laughs> points do you have? Three. Well, you took two. You lucked out. <laughs> <laughs> you were and then knocked down by falling rocks. 
Luckily, it wasn't one of the oh, big just... bricks. <laughs> oh. So but... we have a magic user with one hit point, <laughs> no spells, and a cleric of, what's going on? So it might be good to go back to town and recruit some new help. <laughs> but that's up to you guys. So after you're done retching and your head bleeding and such, uh, Shane, what are you doing? I'm going to scoop up my wizard friend and drag him back to town because this is not working. Elm has forsaken us. <laughs> um, I wanted to collect a what about their bullet bodies? arrow and some arrows okay. before I left. All right. Are you going to collect anything off my dead body? <laughs> like well, all our at gold? least your bodies aren't under a big stone. <laughs> uh, I have, the bodies. I have a garnet with 100, 100 gold pieces. Um, uh, actually... Nothing. When I moved out, nothing was firing on me. I'm gonna collect your body. Okay. And and carry it back to town. All right. Okay. And uh, Karadoc, you're just you and the magic user. Are you carrying the halfling's body? Well, let's see. We've got bodies and two people to carry. So. Yeah, three bodies. Three, three two bodies people, and yeah. two people. <laughs> well, um, if we take the if we if we um uh, carry one body and pile the other two, just... I mean, one's only a halfway. <laughs> so that one goes on top. What? The elf, was, the elf was a whiner. I'm just gonna leave the elf there. Oh, you might want to loot my body. I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess we'll grab anything that's of value and. Uh, You're gonna loot the cobalt except for the squish sandwich one? Yeah. Okay. The squish Put sandwich. Put them in a jar of Benjamite. <laughs> cobalt and. Benjamite uh, cobalt. Halfling stone sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, sorry, I'm just picturing this like like arms. We're still going. We're still going. There's two of us left. Two left. By the way, while I'm looting, I'm only one from the original party. I'm, I'm while, I'm, while I'm looting, I'm contemplating when's the last time I ate whatever came out of. Me. <laughs> okay. Do I have any healing spells so I can heal the one surviving person? Does cleric have any healing spells? No, he's just catching my dead. I don't think clerics get spells till second level in this. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Never mind. You have turn on dead. You can turn us to undead, right? That's what that means. <laughs> no, no, no. Does not mean turn you into undead, and you know that full well, Tom. Thank you very much. Good try. All right. So each cobalt had a sword. A bow and two quivers of arrow. Not quite full, but almost full. Okay. Arrows. Two quivers of arrows. So we've got three... Uh, so six quivers of arrows. Plus the one that was on this body. And the one that was on this body. Nope, there's not one on this body. Three bows. <laughs> um, and Four bows. Three swords. No, short, three. short swords. I'm, this is just kobolds. Oh, kobolds. Okay. okay. And said so three swords? Short swords, yeah. It was too ugly to live, anyways. <laughs> Actually, um, I I couldn't tell the difference. I know. <laughs> and uh, you know, after I'm done, you know, looting them, I'm gonna go collect, you know, the, the full, you know, non cobalt bodies. Okay, we'll go and gather up your gear from your player characters. Yeah. Take them back so they can get a, you know, honorable. Burial. Mass grave. All right, and uh, each <laughs> cobalt has... Oh, any money? We've got XP. But it looks like none of them have any money on them. What would cobalts need money? They got babies. <laughs> Actually, the, all, all the money that the cobalts had was under the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't money for the, these cobalts. There's other treasure, but not uh, on the cobalts. But you got the weapons and yeah. stuff. They, they, they left the money with him because he really believed in compound interest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you finish looting. It's about ten thirty a.m. <laughs> it's been a short day. Yeah. Oh, good. The shops are still open. <laughs> you head back to only three hour walk back. Yeah. Uh, with encumbered 
because of the bodies. Four hour. (laughs) All right, so you bring your squashed and otherwise pin cushioned and dead (laughs) compatriots back to town. Uh huh. Uh, They say that's going to be. (laughs) It will be five gold pieces to bury each of them. Good thing they have it on them. Five gold pieces. Five gold pieces each. How much is a shovel? I'll do this myself. <laughs> well, if we sold the garnet, we could get the money. Oh yeah, the garnet's worth a hundred gold pieces. So we have money. There is no shovel. There is no the entire town. Nobody has a shovel. They've got plows and things like that. Okay. They've got pre-dug holes. I don't know. It just I I don't even. I'll I'll say I will ten silver for. A cheap what, shovel. Nobody's got a portable home? <laughs> That's expensive. Ten silver for a cheap shovel. Uh, <laughs> I will bury them myself. Ten silver. <laughs> but where? Nowhere in your town. No one anywhere in your town. I find a spot outside of town. Okay. <laughs> Make any memorial to your dead compatriots? <laughs> do you have anybody help oh, no, you? Or you just do it all yourself all day long? Now, how deep do you dig mm-hmm. bury them? Six feet. Okay. You're six feet under. Yeah. Okay. Actually, no, wait. Your halfling's going to be very tall. What, Shane? Actually, I do nine feet, and I put them all in the same room. <laughs> 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 Bury some face down so we can't what, find Shane? a way back up. I was just going to say that I buy a shovel and help him, and when we're done, I will praise their heroics to Helm and... Okay. But, 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 but you dug a mass grave nine feet uh, deep and put all three in the mass grave. Yeah. But I make sure that I, you know, loot anything off of their bodies because yeah, the dead don't, don't need it. Yeah. That way they can all go to Valhalla together. Yeah. That's it. All right. So by the time you finish that, it's evening. Uh-huh. What are you two doing? You're going to be there helping or just go party? <laughs> <laughs> We're dead. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> what are they doing? I'm trying to dig my way out of the grave. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so, you guys have not made it into the castle. <laughs> Don't feel bad. A lot of beginner groups never do. Um, although you're not beginners, so, but you are due to the system. I contemplate whether or not I should even close the grave. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the question. Do you want to go ahead and hurry and make your new characters and continue as much as we can in the remaining time, which is go into the keep next and actually do part of the actual dungeon crawl part and see how those mm-hmm. mechanics work, which are very elementary? Or do we want to now go ahead and jump ahead your level three and the next time we play, we'll play third level in a different adventure? I can go ahead and make a third level character. Yeah. You want to do that? So I- Shane and Dan, you'll level up to third level. <laughs> you'll. <laughs> Assume that you met with new people and went in and, and did some of the adventure. You the get into some of the basic mechanics. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah, yeah, the you great, didn't, yeah, you don't. A pile of dead bards. <laughs> um, so, so let's go ahead and level you guys up to third level. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you know, as far as just basic. There's not a whole lot of things you get leveling up in this game. Mm-hmm. Unlike later editions where they like piled on more and more stuff, it's pretty limited. Your charts improve. Clerics gain spells, um, and you gain hit points. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty points, much about it. Sheets. By the um, way, is there any way to heal while well, I'm in town? Because I've got one hit point. Um, there is a whole section on healing, which I think you heal one hit point per night of sleep, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a flat amount. Um, <laughs> I knew this character was going to die. I tried so hard yeah, to keep her the, alive. Uh, <laughs> it is speaking. on here, so that's interesting. Technically speaking, is Riley's character still alive? Nope. That was... Nope. Nope. <laughs> that was she the just second Riley's one. character. Fall down, go boom. <laughs> so Riley's character's dead. That's okay. Fall down, go boom. Well, Riley's Riley twin. wasn't here. <laughs> Riley's twin died. <laughs> no, he can make another one. Okay, I was gonna say. I may have killed this character. Sorry, uh, Riley, if you see this. Up here. I tried really hard. You were already on that wall. That's true. <laughs> hey, she got you off the wall. 
God. Yeah, I'm so mad you let go of that rope. I know that's what happened. <laughs> Not that you couldn't hold your hands together. Oh, God. Oh, I'm crying from laughing so hard. Uh, okay. Too many good death jokes. Good death jokes? Oh, yeah. Like there's a good death? Yeah. Okay. I subscribe to the order of the good death. You should always look on the bright side of that. There literally is an order called the good death. Are they Catholic? Are they bikers? Some of them might be. No, they're mostly death enthusiasts and morticians. <laughs> Who believe that death isn't bad? It's not all bad. No. I got over it. I got better. <laughs> I'm going to get out my other dice because they have a full complement of six fighters. These dice are trained for. Uh, I'm just going to photocopy fifth. this. Well, these dice are trained for fifth edition. Uh, yeah, that's why they roll high. <laughs> By the way, John, your character, um, I give a special memorial because for the first time in your short life, your, you know, you know, your after the fall, your body was that a didn't look joke? normal. Huh? Was that a halfling height joke? Is no, height? no, it was an ugly joke. It was an oh. ugly joke <laughs> because you know you had a comeliness of four. And then he went. say I looked better after the fall. <laughs> yes. Oh, maybe his face bloated and it looked like it filled in. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that because yeah, I have reconstructed surgery from behind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figure with the commonness of four, it's more than just the face. Like you got a twisted, I literally got a face twisted body. But when you yeah. landed, everything was straight. <laughs> Anyway, you see why it's really easy to replace characters. <laughs> yeah. However, once you start to actually survive, <laughs> what? then you start to feel more attached. <laughs> right? When you make survive? it to 10th or 6th or 10th level and then die, it's like, no! Oh, i got to start all over. But I love my Albi underfoot. <laughs> Well, at least he was under stone. <laughs> <laughs> he was he, at the he, end. He, he got stone. <laughs> he got stone. Everybody must get stone. You're good, right? You don't need... Yeah. Yeah. You survived. All right. Everybody's third level. See, now I understand why you know, wizards have towers. Did I get more separate dice? <laughs> they, they basically look out the window, and fire the one matching myself, and go, to, <laughs> go back to the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, so the cleric and magic user survived. That's good. So, Shane. <laughs> Did you lose Shane? Shane? 3d6, right? Or 4d6? 3d6, drop the lowest. Get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the highest. No. I already yeah, did that. Okay, you guys <laughs> zoom right now a little bit so we can talk to Shane. What's that? I need to heal and spell. Okay, well, first, let's level you up uh, in the other areas before you go to spells. Um, you. All right, third level, so you have um, 3,000 experience points. You are now a priest or priestess, and you have two first level spells. Are you sure we're supposed to 3d6 subtract the lowest? You can now automatically turn skeletons and automatically turn zombies, and then it's 7 and 9 for turning ghouls and whites, respectively. <laughs> You get a d6 per hit die, so roll a d6. Show me your result each time. <laughs> okay, so we bring my camera up again. Come back to Cleric. That's a four, if you can see that. Yep, I see it. And. Five! Ooh. All right, nine more. All right, where's the camera? Okay, so the only Where's way Shane's? 
Right there in the... Okay. Yeah. It's the only way I can... All right, so you already had six hit points. So you now have 15 hit points. Watch me get one. Nice one, done. One hit You're point. You're quite hardy. <laughs> yes. And now third level. What do we roll to get? Oh, wait, we get that and you get two priorities. first level spells. So how does that work for... First? So I would definitely probably take Cure Light Wounds if it's available. <laughs> Okay, the cleric meditates, and they appear in your character's mind, casting time. Okay, you need well, all you need to do is choose whatever spells you want your character to have each day. It can only be done at the start of an Wait. adventure. You didn't take the. You may choose any of the spells described hereafter. You may not choose any magic spells; they're a different type. Um. Is it just 3d6? In more advanced games, adventures may last more than a day. In such cases, the cleric can gain spells each morning and completely rested, and any all spells may be changed at his time. So. <laughs> oh, I don't have enough brain power. Your spell this. choices are you have eight to choose from. <laughs> Cure light wounds, detect evil, detect magic, light, protection from evil, purify food and water, remove fear, and resist cold. And uh, some of these spells can be reversed. Uh, well, I think I'm going to take uh, Cure Light Wounds and remove fear. Cure Light Wounds. And what? Remove fear? Yes. Okay. Guess what? I'm talking my way out of everything. All right. <laughs> and you got your spells. And you're now leveled up. Um. And the next level is fourth level, which is expert level. So after we play this next adventure, we'll then bump you guys up to like ninth Can level. Can I see that? To play an expert adventure, and you'll have when we will level you up, you will have new choices from the expert book uh, for your class. Uh, did you get to level up yet? Did you need your players? I need the players. players. Manual? Okay, so it's a D four for your hit points. So go ahead and roll those. So John, could you hand this down to him, please? Yeah, go ahead and roll. So is it a three? D three? It's a D four right and off, right? For magic users, one. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so you have four more. Four. Uh, what class are you? I don't know yet. What, okay. what do we have to choose from with the other book? Um, yeah, the very basic one. Basically, take off. There were two. Uh, there were two that were added. In. Mystic and monk. Mystic and monk were added. So okay. ignore those. John, what are you going with? Well, since my high score is a twelve, uh, and wisdom, and wisdom is the best score for clerics. I guess I will go for a cleric. Okay. Um, I have an eleven coming in this book. Okay, doing a little better this time. Mm -hmm. My charisma is a negative one, though, and my strength is a negative one. Oh, so the other thing that changes would possibly be saving throws. Let's see here. Uh, nope, no saving throw changes. Wait, no, that's normal. Hang on. Yeah, everybody's saving throws are the same for now. When you make fourth level, some of you will improve your saving throws. Thieves, on the other hand, you know, they get percentage chances. So they improve every every level. And of course the undead table for clerics is improved. My character's name is Binder. Okay. Binder? Binder. Can you roll 3d6 for your money? See how quick and easy it is? Just whip up new characters and level them up and such. Woohoo! 180 gold. He's Mr. Moneybags. I can afford actual armor. Uh, as far as if you want to trade in the old equipment for money and split between you and Shane as the survivors for cash, uh -huh. uh, basically just do the half value thing. So if a sword's worth a gold, you get ten, you know, five silver, whatever it is, you get half the value. Oh, okay. I'd also have to go through. Well, I'm a, I'm yeah. Gonna level up. Go through their bodies, then yeah. aggregate all of the loot that you trade in, and then split it between you and Shane as the survivors. Okay. Is, oh, so thief is a. Thief is a class. I'm going to do thief then. 
I think, unless that's an added one. What does it say? Thief's in there. Yeah, no, Thief is part of the core. Okay, then I'm yeah. doing Thief. And oh. they get specific thieving skills. Thieving skills! So I'm going to be getting a second level spell and a uh, well, first level spell. Correct. I believe you have to tell me which ones. Yes. How many hit points do I get? It's Not one. Enough. Okay. I gotta so, wait until you're done. Before we wrap up, I am gonna read the last page from B1 in Search of the Unknown as a reminder to you guys on the top 10 tips to play and survive. Two. Which maybe I should have read first, but we were intensely reading straight from the. Two. You know. B1 is also geared, assuming that you're a GM who's never GM'd before. We're, we're not gonna do that one because we already did that okay. last year. Seven mm -hmm. hit points. Although we did with AD&D, but still. So I'm debating between Palace of the Silver Princess, which we talked about on the show, or Night's Dark Terror, which is one of the British ones, which British ones I tend to be pretty happy with. Yeah, I like the British ones. The Night's Dark Terror is a big, thick one. So the... Palace of the Silver Princess is a good one. Palace of the Silver Princess... Let me know when you guys are done with it. Looks like your basic dungeon crawl still. Generally, the way it works is basic is dungeon crawls, expert is wilderness survival. Uh, Here, companions is kind of establishing your domains and legal. mastering, you know, dudes, your keeps and castles and all that. Um, okay. For money, I rolled five, uh, eight, nine. What's that? For money, I rolled nine. Okay, so you have 90 gold. They were, they were levels. What's that? Did you end up getting more money since we skipped two levels? Well, um, money, you guys got some money. You're the two survivors, so you had a bit more money. Um, don't worry about that too much at this point. Things are cheap enough. And you guys did get loot. So you're still going to be poor, but that's okay. And uh, they had the, the Cobalt had short bows? Yes. Okay. And short swords. Okay. John? I just can, I yeah, we're I not doing you... anything outside oh. of the, the core rules at this point, so that the disadvantage not. of leveling up quickly is you don't get all that loot in between. Right? You don't have any magic items, etc. You're going to need to earn them. Uh, so, with the money that Dan and I got, did I bump up to two email, or I don't know. Or, oh, shit, no, but I don't know. Never mind. Oh, this one's supposed to be a... Oh, this one is a special basic to expert transition module. So this is perfect, actually. Oh, okay. Because if that was the point, was to transition you guys. This one says it's explicitly designed to do so. Welcome to Night's Dark Terror. Wait, if I have a 7 on my deck, sir, can I even be a thief? No. You what? No. Yeah, you gotta make sure you get a 9. Okay, never mind. Not a thief. The module which opens up the infinite possibilities of wilderness campaign adventuring in the Dungeons and Dragons. This is where it's at. Whoa. Will be costs up the, two the adventure unfolds in the wild lands of the Grand Duchy of Karamekos. Oh, that's famous. Yeah. I've got the gazetteer for that. The river journey takes the adventurers to the besieged mm. steeding. Goblin hordes assail the walls. Life or death struggle against evil. Ultimate confrontation with the ancient perils. I guess I'm going to be an elf again because I can't really be anything else. Maybe a halfling? What are you going to be? I'm a cleric. I got a 12 wisdom. It's my highest score. <gasps> yeah. I can't be a halfling. <laughs> so this is specifically designed to try to transition you from basic to expert. So the structure of this module allows you to slot into expert campaign play with the minimum of difficulty. In the opening phases, the order of events is clearly defined, but as the adventure progresses, more opportunities are provided to let you shape the exact course of the adventure. 
Um, the last section is des- deliberately free form. A lot of action here depends on the interaction between you and your players. <gasps> I can be a fighter. So, isn't that beautiful that's how it just steps you through, step mm-hmm. by step by step? That's that's the thing about Beck Me. It's got some really good maps, too. Like a lot of maps. Oh, cool. This, this could be too much fun as a campaign. <laughs> you might, might want to play it too much. Five <laughs> percent. Like, okay, I get a I get a bonus because of it. No, I don't get a bonus. I have to be a thirteen to get the bonus. Oh. All right, uh, die six. So three dice six plus. Yes. Con. John, um, your body, so I can loot it. <laughs> yes, he wants your body, and he wants to loot it. Uh, you don't see on there, but there's a special spear. That has a stick uh, <laughs> tied to it so that it can be uh, self-setting. <laughs> I've never got to use it. So. Setting stick. Oh, Jesus. I might as well be a first level character with that roll. Well, one. Okay, hit dice. I have a total of four hit points. <laughs> at third level. Okay, oh. okay, okay. Life's rough, and hit then you dice. die. <laughs> Well, let me start rolling my next character. <laughs> one D eight. He's not going to survive a single combat. Well, you can do like the bard did and make fifty bards in advance. <laughs> There's thirty nine more where those came from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. First level, I would have had seven During hit points. During the course of the adventure, player characters may die, <laughs> and players will wish to introduce new characters in the game. This should be done in a logical and creative manner. For example, new characters could arrive at such and such as having heard rumors about the such and such, or they could be discovered as such and such held by the such and such. I'm, you know, saving the spoilers here. The main thing is to provide a rationale for new characters appearing when they do, having them simply dropping in out of the blue should be avoided. I am under well, God. Well, for us jumping through this, we might still do it. I have 17 hit points. <laughs> Nice. You're a little better this time. Yeah. It sounds like you're rubbing it in his face a little bit. A little. A lot. A little. Okay. I have, I don't know how I made it to third level because my first two got numbers are one, 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 and two. You hid in the back a lot? Yeah. Uh, how did I get experience points and all that? Uh, you threw things at other things. It might not be a lot of So at this stage, it definitely requires the GM to actually prepare the adventure, right? It's now assuming, because now you have to take it to the wilderness level and you have to have a lot more preparation and knowledge. But that's okay, because we went through these nice hand-holding, and it does help me with the transition. So that is very nice. Um... Have pregens to give me examples. Okay, I have a I question. Think a pre-gen is, it'll be better. It'll be stronger. Yeah, it better. says plus con bonus, which I didn't figure in, right? To the hit die right off. Well, this has a lot of NPCs. Um, my my con bonus is negative one. Yeah, so you subtract a hit point per level. <sighs> So if you roll the one for a level, you actually get no Correct. hit points. Correct. So I have 14 nice hit points. Jeez, some of this is outright deadly. Oh yeah, I don't mind. We're going to die before we get past the front door again. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember why everybody moved away from basic. Because you die so quickly? Yeah. That's okay. Think about the feeling of... So, here's the thing. A, it doesn't take you that long to make a character, right? <clears throat> right? It doesn't mm-hmm. take you that long. Yeah, it doesn't take long to make a character. You have to become smarter as a player. And a little lucky, but mostly smarter as a Mostly player. lucky. <laughs> no, no, no. Other way. Because you have to learn not to put yourself in situations where you have to depend on luck all the time. Well, especially people if like you had the blessings of Helm, you'd still be alive. Or Cord. <laughs> How many points you have at first level? Oh, yeah. This is part of what you speak. <laughs> Did you catch the last episode yesterday, Shane? No, I was I was busy doing stuff. I really wanted to, but I, I couldn't. Yeah, you missed I, out. You it, have. It got a little chaotic as Dan and others spent all their hero points at once. <laughs> Shane? Yeah, that's the thing. I was going to drop some stuff too. And I, 
I've still got like 900 hero points just hanging out. Dan spent 2,500. Yeah. I have that check in my purse. Simul- <laughs> on four things simultaneously. And then Katie spent hers as well simultaneously. Hey, whatever happened with that cranky warrior? Was that the, uh, was that the old mother that I paid for? No, that all happened before. It, it, if you want, I can send you links to the episode so you can watch. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll catch them up later once they okay. So, first level, you had two more hit points than I do at third. So, I don't want to hear anything from you. Immediately. Are the lance attack maneuver and set spear versus charge maneuver? Helm on your behalf. Chapter 8. So, despite <laughs> most of your party getting wiped out, did you have fun with just the basic yeah. adventure? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, no. thought it was, I thought it was wretched. <laughs> 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 but it's basic, right? But yeah. it, you just have fun with it. Mm-hmm. And you don't have the rules really constricting you as much, so you kind of... Well, you there know, are a lot of freedom there. It's no, it, it, just hang, if you, hang a if noose. You get hit, you're likely going to die. <laughs> so try not to die. Try yeah, not, try to, not get to get hit. Yep. Yep. But I definitely would, would curb the murder hobo urge in those people because it doesn't really work very well. Yeah. So Can I'm, you see how your play play style in this game versus third, fourth, and fifth edition would be radically different? Yeah. Least, I think I levels. think we should threaten to do this uh, to kids. What's that, Shane? <laughs> well, just because, like, you know, especially in like three point five, you have feats and buffs and this right, and that. Right, right. It's hard to actually kill them off. Yeah. Third, fourth, and fifth, especially fifth. Chapter eight. To actually kill them off really takes a lot of bad luck. Uh, I, I've managed to do it. Oh, I have too, and I've managed to get my characters killed myself plenty of times. But it takes a whole series of unfortunate events. Not Here, just one. it's just done very quickly. And what this does <laughs> I can see what is you this has say. a much quicker causality effect. Cause, effect, choice, consequence. You get the feedback much more quickly. It's not as buffered. You really have to think things out and make the right choice. And, and reduce the risk as much as possible so you rely on chance as little as possible. The next character I play is going to be a medieval engineer. <laughs> so, uh, Danielle, you were gonna say, I'll do what for some of them. We when we get if we get like a regular group that is unruly, we should threaten to do this with them. See, but if you do it punitively, that's not gonna work. <coughs> it can't be a punishment. Well, I mean, I'll just rebel. That'd just be bad. No. Part of the reason I'm having us do this is remember, Beckme is because of the rule cyclopedia technically in print, mm-hmm. so it's technically one of the games we can offer, and. The game mechanics are so much simpler, we just, you know, got to be up to date update on them, that for drop-ins, might not be bad to consider. Oh, I, I know some for, kids that I want to run through this yeah, for drop-ins. Yeah, because you can whip up characters quickly, <laughs> play very quickly. The rules mechanics are very quick and simple. Um, again, we're just rusty and, you know, got to figure out what things are. But once you have them, it's like this. And you can have game, you can get a lot done in a short time, you know, in a short session. And if characters die, you whip up a new one very quickly. By the As way, opposed to a 5th edition character takes forever to make, um, compared to these. John, I need the, some prices on equipment. Here. Sure. Oh, thank you. So... I don't see... It said to check num- thing 8 for Lance Attack. And then... I'm worried you're getting bogged down spear, with the rules like at the moment, but... <laughs> oh, uh, it's... It's, it was in the main thing, and okay. it, it said to look these two up in eight, and okay. I'm not seeing it what, in what eight. You, have you know there's an index in the back, right? Yeah, but I, I just thought chapter eight would be easy. <laughs> well, you know, I have three of these rule cyclopedias, right? Yeah. Although, I'm, I'm trying to use just a cover from there, so I'll, okay. that, I'll just wait on that. Well, you can, now that we're doing expert level-ish, you can use rule cyclopedia if you want. Just stick with the core classes. And then oh, as there we go it is. Up to master, you can look at the other. Okay, done. Or excuse me, uh, companion. Here, pike sword. Here, I, I had my rules exciting piece, so everybody has one. You might want to look where you're doing, so you grab the right object. Yeah, and then <laughs> after this adventure, when we do it next time, 
you know, we'll play at this transition from basic to expert. Then we'll jump you up to around ninth, tenth level, and you'll be playing full blown expert. We'll play an adventure at that level, and then we'll jump you up to companion level. And then at that point, you have to start building dominions and stuff. So that might take a few more sessions to work through. Oh, somebody's smoking. Sheesh. I'm losing a lot of bodies to build keep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, uh, shall I read aloud to you guys the reminder tips of sure. tips for players, the top ten tips? Yeah, you know, sure. Decrease the dead air. Because we're just doing things. Yes. <clears throat> so this is from B1. Dungeon module B1 in search of the unknown. You get the classic kind of very faint, beat up cover here from 1979. This is a special instructional module. It says right on the front. So this also assumes you, other than the the, mod, the adventure in the rule book, you have very little to no experience as a DM. So it once again walks you through step by step. Now this one does require taking some preparation time. Right, you had your practice adventure with the rule book, but you can just jump in and start doing. This one you actually need to read through and learn and get the hang of and go through this prepared dungeon crawl. Um, and there's lots of little tricks and stuff that you want to make sure you've read in advance or you'll miss them. But here in the very, very back, the last page, page 32 of the module, it says tips for players. Beginning players would do well to profit from some basic advice before beginning their D&D careers. And with that in mind, the following points are offered for consideration. <clears throat> One, be an organized player. Keep accurate records on your character, experience, abilities, items possessed, etc. For your own purposes and to aid the dungeon master. Two, always keep in mind that the dungeon master is the moderator of the game and as such deserves the continued cooperation, consideration, and respect of all the players. If you disagree with him or her, present your viewpoint with uh, deference to his position as game judge, but be prepared to accept their decision as final. After all, keep in mind that you may not know all aspects of the overall game situation, and that in any case, not everything will always go your way. So, for example, in the B Solo adventure we ran uh, with uh, Danielle yesterday, in certain parts of the castle, magic did not work normally. Now, I was spelling it out because it was a solo adventure, but there are many D&D &D adventures that way where you expect a spell to work and then it doesn't, and a rules lawyer will freak out. They're like, no, it's supposed to be this way. Well, it didn't. Let's move along and you can maybe discover why. I'm not going to explain to you why because it's part of the adventure. So it's important that people just you know allow for that. Number three, cooperate with your fellow players and work together when adventuring. Remember that on any foray into the dungeon or wilderness, a mix of character classes will be beneficial since the special abilities of the various characters will complement each other and add to the overall effectiveness of the party. Number four, be neither too hasty or too sluggish when adventuring. If you are too fast in your exploration, you may recklessly endanger yourself and your fellow adventurers and fall prone to every trick and trap you encounter. If you are too slow, you will waste valuable time and may be waylaid by more than your share of wandering monsters without accomplishing anything. As you gain playing experience, you will learn the proper pace, but rely on your DM for guidance. Number five, avoid arguing. While disagreements about a course of action will certainly arise from time to time, players should quickly discuss their options and reach a consensus in order to proceed. Bickering in the dungeon will only create noise, which may well attract wandering monsters. Above all, remember that D&D is just a game and a little consideration will go far toward any hard feelings. Tell you what, um, since you guys are higher level, how about you all roll 3d6 again? And add that to your gold so you have a little more equipment spending money. <laughs> now that you've looked at the... I'm just... No, I just... I just it just occurred to me. So you have a little bit more. Eight. By the way, Shane... Eleven. Go ahead and add... And this is from the loot. 634 gold. 
Seven silver. Hang on, I've got his character sheet here. And five copper. Hang on. 634 gold. 634 gold. Okay. Seven silver. Seven silver. Five copper. Five copper. Do you okay. have the equipment open on yours? So that and I Shane, can what did you roll for your 3d6? 3d6 for what? Sorry, uh, additional coins just from your adventuring. Okay, hold on. I'll roll that real quick. Okay. No belt. No. Mm -hmm. You're assumed to have yeah, basic some some basic stuff you have. They have to assume you have because they're not going to tell you oh, pants cost five, this much. Five and four. They kind of do. Five, five, they? and four, so 140. Not in this yes. list. Okay. So 140 gold did for you. Nope, did not even say clothing. Did you hear that, Nan, to roll 3d6 for some extra coinage? Okay. I have rolled a total of eight. Okay, so that's 80 okay. gold additional. Mm -hmm. When you're done, I'm gonna. <clears throat> sure. Number six. Be on your guard. Don't be overly cautious, but be advised that some non player characters may try to hoodwink you. Players may doubtless double cross you. Not and while adventuring, tricks and traps await the unwary. Of course, you won't avoid every such pitfall. Dealing with the uncertainties is part of the fun and challenge of the game. But don't be surprised if everything is not always as it seems. Number seven. Treat any hirelings or henchmen fairly. If you reward them generously and do not expose them to great risks of life and limb that your own character would not face, then you can expect a continuing loyalty. Although there may be exceptions, of course. That's something as you guys go up in level is, is having henchmen and hirelings. Number eight, know your limits. Your party may not be a match for every monster you encounter. <laughs> or every, or every stone, yeah. <laughs> and occasionally it pays to know when and how to run away from danger. Likewise, a dungeon adventure may have to be cut short if your party suffers great adversity or depleted strength. Many times it will take more than one adventure to accomplish a certain goal, okay. and it okay. thus will be necessary to come back out, out of a dungeon to heal wounds, restore magical abilities and spells, and reinforce a party's strength. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number nine, use your head. Many of the characters' goals in the game can be accomplished through the strength of arms or magic. Others, however, demand common sense and shrewd judgment as well as logical deduction. The most successful players are those who can effectively use both aspects of the game to advantage. Number 10. D&D is a role-playing game, and the fun of the game comes in playing your character's role. Take on your character's persona and immerse yourself in the game setting. Enjoy the fantasy element and the interaction with your fellow players and the dungeon master. Enjoy yourself and good luck. So, not bad, huh? So, yeah, so the next adventure when we do our next applied gaming for Beckme, this British Special Basic Expert Transition Module B10 Introductory Expert Game Adventure Night's Dark Terror by Jim Bambra, Graham Morris, and Phil Gallagher. Graham Morris, I recognize. I don't know their names. And this is from. Boy, there's a lot of maps in here. I love it. Is it Grant Morris that's on the back? Graham Morris. Oh, Graham. This is from 1986. But look at all these maps. So we got the Eastern Karamikos area map, which is a lot more detail in the in the uh, Gazetteer. And actually, the back of the uh, little cyclopedia actually has all the maps for the this whole world. Actually, two different worlds, I believe. Uh, we have some various temples and a tapestry that's part of the story. We have a whole bunch of different types of indoor and outdoor maps. Huh. And we have some... Now, this is back in the days when miniatures are smaller. So the hexes... I mean, the, uh, the grid is to the size of my lead miniatures. But uh, we've got a full-size... Map. Oh. Nice. And then a whole bunch of other 
region maps. This is quite the adventure. Yeah. We'll have to decide how many sessions you guys want to play in this particular one before moving on to the uh, uh, companion level. Depends on how much fun you're having with it. <laughs> These British ones are usually really exceptional. Like like the Sinister Secret Assault Marsh and such and those others. And they just they tend to stand out for whatever reason. How are you guys doing any characters there? She's doing equipment. Okay, yep. yeah. That's the longest part is the equipment. <laughs> it really is. Yep, and there's the, I have the Gazetteer. Gazetteer number one, the Grand Duchy of Karamikos. So that's perfect. So I'll have to do some prep between now and next session. So the basic book doesn't have clothes, but the more advanced books, do you do have clothes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was running around naked all the time. Obviously. Well, you had automatic set of clothes. Okay. It's just they were, again, trying to keep it simple as mm -hmm. they introduce you. And then as you go up, because the rule cyclopedia includes expert, master, all of that combined, it's only missing immortals. Well, there's not that much added to the equipment other than the clothing. And... Yeah. The main thing that the rule cyclopedia has is skills, mm. which is not in the rest of you know, that all comes later. And oh, that is that why I said the lance attack me? Yeah, the skills are a mm. whole other thing. I might have just gotten bogged down by the. Yep, 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 yep. Calculator. It was raining character bodies. <laughs> Well, two squashed. Uh, two hit the floor. The other one just kind of laid out. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite version of that song is that YouTube video with the parrot singing it. <laughs> have you seen it? No, I haven't. Yeah, I like it way better than the original version of the song. My mom used to run into the room and songs like this and scream them in my face. I love her. <laughs> My wife had the misfortune of being in the middle of the uh, impromptu mosh pit when that song started playing. <laughs> Dang. Holy symbol. 25 gold. Is there a baby? Yeah. Oh. Something else. as it's singing it's like it looks like it's having a great time it, oh, it does yeah. like this it goes that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> that is my favorite version of that song <laughs> uh, <coughs> beautiful he's working with his metal scream yeah Shane were you able to hear that song I'm sorry what were you able to hear that parrot singing the song yeah, I I couldn't quite make out what it was, but I oh. could still music. You can just look up YouTube parrot singing, uh, bodies hit the floor, and you'll find it. It's very funny. Okay. It's awesome. Oh, I forgot to check my encumbrance. How much am I allowed to carry? Oh yeah, encumbrance is definitely. In, in, Which is probably going to reduce my gear down to a, <laughs> a back. Oh, yep. Never mind. Because <laughs> you're strength. I can't even wear armor. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm worthless. I have four hit points and I can't wear armor. Okay, so, so you're make another character as a backup. <laughs> Play this one first and you can make have another the other one, one there too. I have a seven strength. What, what okay, can I, what so roll, can I another, roll another one. Wait, how much can you carry? Here, John. The encumbrance. So you're Nodwick. 
Remember who Nodwick is? Yeah, I, I can cast healing spells. You're Nodwick. You can carry the chest around. Oh, wait, you can't even do that. <laughs> so where's the encumbrance thing at? Can you put the chest in a cart for him? He's, he's, he's Kid... Kid Don. Q. Q Don. Q Don? Nodwick backwards, something like that. How do we have a 12 wisdom, so just use cleric. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That's just so where's the? Uh, I gotta find where it says encumbrance. How much I can actually carry? Okay. Sounds like you're being a little salty. This this character's name should be Salt. <laughs> <laughs> so I would recommend that you go ahead and make a backup one to have ready because that one's probably not gonna last very long in the, in the expert set. But have fun with it, right? Just be somebody who's just. <laughs> Well, you know, that elf lasted three adventures before right. Punk Punk Punk. I know, yeah. I only had one hit point. And, and, and all it was, it was just one bad mistake. So, you know, yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's difficult, but it, <laughs> sometimes it's just fun to just see how far you can make a seemingly useless character survive. <laughs> um, okay, yes. so how do you Calculate how much I can carry before the encumbrance. That's your strength. And okay. then your encumbrance capacity. So you got a base encumbrance capacity. So and I'm trying to look modified up. by your strength. Okay. Because so I have a high here, strength. Encumbrance. Uh, encumbered movement. P30. Do you tell me how to wait? Okay, P30. Because I didn't factor in encumbrance. Because it's not in this one. Yeah, that's not, that's not the players. Where's the red book? The the this one? Red players book. Oh, you have it. Can I can I keep this? So page thirty should have no. That's supposed oh to be no, in the it's gonna be. That's supposed to be in the middle of the players book. Page thirty. Okay, that should have your encumbrance encumbered movement thing. Encumbered movement table encumbrance of up to four hundred coin. Yep, he's done in coins. Which makes sense for this game. Uh, normal speed, encounter speed. It doesn't have anything. Basic encumbrance, unarmed. Armed. Encumbrance, page 63 and 88 of the big book. That doesn't make sense to me. What's that chart? That reduces your speed and stuff. Um, so unless you're strength... Tells you points you can carry before you get slowed down. 400 you coin? Have, what's your strength? Your strength 14. Is, okay, so you have a might have a slight benefit from that. But the base without this exceptional strength. It's 400 coin. Correct. And then you slow down. Okay. You, so you, it doesn't, yeah. And it should say how much you slow down. And it's you encumber it. Does. You can run it, yeah. As you keep it. So 400 coin? Yeah. Exactly. That's why horses and wagons and carts and things are handy. Okay, That's why you have to do things in, in stages. Okay, a spear. A dagger is 10. A spear. Spear. Spear is 30. Hey, man, you guys can buy pack moves with bone and gold. It's related. Yeah. There you go. You guys can have some pack animals. Yeah. Can my pack animal wear my armor for me? <laughs> <laughs> Probably fight better than you, too. Um, didn't they say that what you wear doesn't count against your encumbrance, though? Yeah, it did. Yeah. So what you wear doesn't count against your encumbrance penalty, John. Okay. So oh, cool. My backpack are. is exactly what I need. I'm going to change my armor then. Oh, go ahead and change your armor. <laughs> so, it got soiled. <laughs> you know, you what, you doesn't count for encumbrance? what? What you wear does not count against your encumbrance. Except for your backpack. Yeah, your backpack counts, but as far as clothing and armor, that does not count. You know, shield does count, backpack, sacks, those all count against. But your oh, clothing. Shit, 
I what? Some of my, I need some chain mail then, because I just yeah. got, like, better. Now, it still does affect your speed. Certain armor will slow down your base rate, right? Okay. But it doesn't affect your encumbrance penalty as far as weight calculation. I don't think chain mail affects movement, but I'd have to look at the book again. Yeah. Okay, um, I need a quiver. Oh, never mind. The, the, the next set of, uh, you know, the disadvantages of suit armor um, outweigh its usefulness. In fact, it says it is so noisy and slow, and so most fighters use suit armor only when fighting from horseback. So, okay. I'll keep the same suit on my head. Uh, quiver of arrows. Five. I'm glad I have three copies of that book. Sorry, one of them is blurry. Yeah. It's okay, I'm making it work. It just takes me longer to focus. Yeah. But once we get you through all these levels, I'm curious what you guys think as far as, you know, the standard tier offering. But you gotta get more familiar with it first. Mm -hmm. Flaming oil. Yeah. It's not something a cleric can use. Uh, you can't use sharp edges. I don't know if it specifies about oil. I, I remember somewhere there was. Oh, that must be advanced. I, I think use. that's advanced. I don't think they specify, but let me know. They do specify about sharp weapons for clarity. Yeah, I, I've got <coughs> a warning. It's that. in the players section about character class. <coughs> Which, who has my red players? Oh, Daniel does. Me. Yeah. And John has my other one. Now, what's interesting is when you hit Expert, it's only one book. I don't want iron right here. All the other Standard. ones are two books, but for some reason they did Expert as one book. Standard rations, two defeats. So it's 14 days. Which equals 5, 10. Ten gold. Okay, better not buy anything else. Rations. I, I, just, I, I rations. probably should just go on. Be as low on my um, what equipment as possible. What's that, Danielle? Oh my God! Standard rations are heavy. Yes, <laughs> it weighs a lot. <laughs> not doing that. I'm gonna spend the extra for iron rations. So now well, I'm keeping everything on my horse. Things like cure light wounds are reversible, mm -hmm. which means cause light wounds. Yeah. But you have to be careful about alignment. Yeah. When doing that. And it does 1d8 plus 1. What was the other spell you picked? I'm Remove not the fear. cleric. Oh, you're not the cleric. Who was it? Shane. Oh, that was Shane. Sorry. Yeah, I, I took Remove Fear and Cure Light Wounds. Yeah, both Remove Fear and Cure Light Wounds are reversible spells. Oh, so I can turn regular things too. So you can cause fear and you can cause light wounds. But you have to be careful about that. I'll be saving that for, for healing people falling off the wall. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> I have more hit points. I might survive. Yeah. Well, this game is just brutal because once you hit zero, that's it. There's just nothing in between. That's why I always house ruled the, the negative tier con thing. A and okay. had the I'm alternate done. option of minus 10. I think I want a writing. I'm down to 13 gold out of my 310 I started with. All right. Okay, well, so if I wanted to more. fight. <laughs> Off the back of my well, horse. My character um, is Binder the Coward. Cool. You want to make another backup? Oh, you got to get going. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, you can wrap up your characters next session. When we resume, it's 10 o'clock. We should wrap it up.
I am down to John, make sure you horses. bring back my other red books next yep. time, please. Well, then I'll put it in my bag as soon as I get home. So, yeah. Uh, so, next week, uh, Sunday and Monday, will be the RPG Theory. Mm-hmm. But Sunday from 6 to 9, Shane, I don't know if you caught this, since Hero of the Mist is finished, we're using the Sunday 6 to 9 slot to try to get through all the games we need to evaluate. So oh, all of the superhero games, the cop games, the steampunk, cyberpunk, all those games we need to evaluate. That's we're hoping if we get people to show up Sunday six to nine. Yeah, I can probably make that work. Okay. So and then you know the Sundays one noon to three are the either theory or applied gaming where it's this other tier level stuff. Plus, like I said, I um I'd be willing to you know at least. Run one of the superhero games to you know, Great. help take some more off. Yeah, that would be really, really helpful. All right. I need everybody's character sheets, please. Pencils down. I'm just <laughs> making it so I can read it the next time I'm in here. And if you can hand me all of the rule books back so I can put them away and such, please. And, yeah, I guess this week I'll start prepping downstairs for the move Saturday. Mm-hmm. Whee! Yay! That's what we're pleased my character next is going to be wondering. What does he have a war horse with chain mail and a wagon? <laughs> <laughs> Why did he spend stuff? all of that money on just that? <laughs> <laughs> because I just want to hide fire. <laughs> I didn't fire. Oh, Thank good. you. Great. We should sign out. My character is good to. Yeah. Um, um, so, thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Be well. Happy gaming. We'll be back. So, tomorrow morning, I'll be back uh, 9 a.m. to noon doing the uh, researchers meeting that we do every week, and uh, which includes like Omar from Saudi Arabia and, and others. And then uh, Friday, we'll be dropping an RPG at Spark Central Community Center. Mm-hmm. Saturday, we are moving the studio, actually all week, moving the studio from here in my garage back downstairs because the summer heat is coming. It's going to be over 80. Summer is coming. Summer is coming. And, uh, it's no longer and winter. And we'll be back again Sunday, 10 a.m. to noon for researchers, uh, noon to 3 for RPG theory and lecture discussion. And then six to nine for evaluating new games like superhero so game or something. Listen. So, what would you guys like me to tackle first for this coming Sunday's eval game? Superhero, cyberpunk, cops, or steampunk? Steampunk. I say we do cops. We haven't done a cops in for a while. Steampunk. I would have guessed steampunk with John. I would have totally guessed that. I'm gonna wow. go with steampunk too. Have a type. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, there's limited choices. Actually, you know what? I don't have any steampunk stuff yet, except oh. for quasi uh, uh, Terry top. Pratchett. Terry Pratchett, I kind of, mm-hmm. kind of ish, but you can um, technically do uh, GURPS uh, steampunk is probably what it would be. Well, I was about so to if say we do GURPS. GURPS cops, then. Cops. Yeah, if we do GURPS cops one week, then the next week we can do GURPS steampunk. While and then... we still kind of remember the GURPS rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, that sounds like a plan. And that'll give me time to, to order the steampunk. Yeah. All right, so GURPS, GURPS cops, Bing. GURPS steampunk, maybe GURPS cyber. Maybe we'll do three GURPS in a row, do GURPS uh, cyberpunk. That way we kind of just know the system well enough. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we'll compare the others like Shadow. Well, and, and then the, the nice thing, too, is that we can then. Uh, Base our decision off of the the, the variant of it, yeah. And then I we can do the GURPS superhero one because that's part of our list. Yeah. So I guess we're doing GURPS month. <laughs> GURPS May month. May is GURPS month. <laughs> All right. Cool. We cool. might we might start with GURPS light and or we might go into full weight. We'll see. We can that? just do regular GURPS first. We need to make the hashtag on Twitter GURPS month. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Shane. Thanks a lot, everybody else. Where we be? Be well. Happy gaming and Namarie. Dream well. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>